Pamphlets every afternoon says the government is behind the gradual collapse of his personal and professional life, adding that the conspiracy, quote, goes all the way to the top. Before 2001, I'd see my friend Stephen Copley every couple of weeks, and now he won't even answer my calls. The, f the f government got to him too. Think about it. My coworkers, my wife, my friends, everyone calling me crazy after September 11th and wanting nothing to do with me. What are the chances of that? This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And it's the live Sunday edition of the program. Of course, we'll take your calls about anything. I botched it up last night when I announced that uh, 710 Keel was with us, news radio down there in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. And the truth is they're actually with us tonight. So welcome <laughs> aboard uh, to our new listeners in Shreveport. Now, you guys have been listening actually for a few weeks. It's a station that, you know, we're, we're kind of easy going when it comes to the radio business. They added our show a month before we actually got the agreement out of them. So you're, you're actually not that new to the show if you're listening in Shreveport, unless tonight happens to be your first night, and it certainly could be, in which case you will find out that Free Talk Live is a little different than your typical talk radio show. We actually do allow anybody to call the show as long as you can dial a phone actually if you can have someone else dial the phone and hand it to you as long as you can hold <laughs> the receiver up to your ear and mouth correctly uh you can get on the radio we really have very low standards here on free talk live but we try to uh you know again open it up to anybody we'd like you to have a topic you know yes, call in with uh, something you want to talk about rather than hey you're not getting on the radio yeah no none of that please no shout outs but yeah we we, don't, we want to have a conversation with you it's just we don't know what you want to talk about so you have to call and tell us that now one of the ways that we can find out what some semblance of what you want to talk about is our website which is freetalklive.com you can go there and you can submit content to it so like let's say you see a news story that you want to share with us and our other listeners, just submit that via our Reddit-based system, and then you can vote yes or no, vote up or down, whether you like or dislike the other submissions that are on the site, and therefore we'll have some idea of what our listeners think is important. But of course, the best way to inform us of that is to call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. In fact, we're going to start on Skype tonight with a special guest. And this is something that's also unusual about Free Talk Live. Normally, we don't do guests on this program. But there's one guy in particular that we've had on, I think, more than any other guest. Yeah, I'd say more than anyone. In the history of Free Talk Live. It's Jim Babka from DC.org, And now a new project that he's going to be telling us about here tonight, the Zero Aggression Project. And Jim, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Yeah, it's really glad to be here, guys. Apparently, you needed more work on your plate because it looks like Downsize DC has not shut down. So I presume that Downsize DC is continuing. What's the status there? Yeah, Downsize DC not only is continuing, but we're about to relaunch. And after the conversation we just had five minutes ago, we're about to relaunch a redesign of that site to uh, bring some new features to it. So that's going to be coming oh, wow. up. We're going to be talking about that here about midsummer. So I'm very excited about that. So let me bring our listeners up to speed. Maybe they're brand new, just tuning in for the first time tonight. And they don't know the 10 years plus 15 years of history that uh, that we've had together you and i jim first made contact during the harry brown campaign in the year 2000 right. you were his press secretary at the time <clears throat> and i was a local uh disc jockey at a, a radio station and i wanted to interview harry and that's how we got to know each other after harry's campaign you launched for uh, president in the year 2000 you, on, as a libertarian right you launched another organization which morphed into downsizedc.org and that's right. a way for people to sort of crowdsource, you know, basically sending letters to uh, senators and representatives about liberty-oriented things, right? I mean, that's kind of encapsulating yeah, we, it. We take, we take uh, the complex things that they're doing, usually criminal in nature, and we put the cookies in the lowest shelf. We give people a sample letter. They use our system that identifies for them who the representative and two senators are and then simultaneously delivers those messages in such a way that those offices know they're hearing from constituents. And if they know they're hearing from a constituent, they count your message. It's, and so we try to get as many of those messages in as possible every day. Yeah, so a downsizedc.org, great site, but that's not what we're focusing on tonight. You reached no. out to us this week to announce the beginning of something that I feel like we, you might have teased the last time we had you on Free Talk Live, which is probably like a year at least ago. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's called the Zero Aggression Project. I guess first tell me what inspired this, because I know you've had your hands full with Downsize DC, and you know we're the, we're the kind of people that always just want to add more projects to our plates. So what made you want to do this? Boy, there's, a, there's several things, but let me just choose one that's going to be, I think, sp especially interesting to the both of you. We noticed that a lot of libertarians did not use the zero aggression principle uh, in their conversations with other people. Uh, the zero aggression principle basically says don't threaten or initiate force or delegate it to politicians to do on your behalf. Uh, we'll, we can uh, break that down a bit more in a moment, but it's a, it's a principle that kind of addresses virtually every issue out there. It's, and, and we found that it was at the center of many libertarians' thought but that they weren't actually expressing it. We began asking ourselves why they weren't sharing this idea. And as we began exploring potential ways of, over, of dealing with that issue and overcoming it, uh, we found uh, new ways to begin communicating the message. Uh, we also found that there were some things that we could do, some tools that we could provide that would make it a lot easier for people. And the two key insights that we found was that, first of all, uh, they are afraid of the anarchy objection. They're afraid of being called anarchists. Hmm. And so we decided, we came up with a unique, a unique way of dealing with that. And then second, uh, there was, there's some perception out there uh, that were cold hearted, mean bastards who just want, you know, capitalists to succeed and other people to die in the muck. Uh, we're often associated with the work of Ayn Rand. That's, that's fine and all, but we, we've now brought, we're going to bring in an empathy based argument. Uh, we're comparing the zero aggression principle very much to the golden rule, a behavior that people engage in pretty much with their friends and family already. In fact, they even leave perfect strangers alone and trust themselves to be in public with other strangers. And so we're going to try to play off this this idea that people are already they're already acting in libertarian fashion in most areas of their lives mm -hmm. until they get to politics then the conversation gets very ugly and they begin to right. say or think mean-spirited things and so we're going to bring these two ideas principally uh, onto the table and begin to try to start a moral discussion as opposed to a pragmatic issue based one at a time political discussion one of the problems with uh, discussing issues is uh, you whip out your facts, the other side, the other side, whoever uh -huh, it is, uh -huh. they, right, and they they whip out their facts. You, you, for instance, minimum wage is a great one, right? Like, mm -hmm. look, if you uh, if you institute a minimum wage, what you do is you drive employees out of the marketplace, you cause unemployment, and blah blah blah. And then people say, well, you'd think that if you uh, just looked at it, but in fact, the 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 experiments show differently. In Seattle, when they institute the minimum wage, da -da 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 -da, and and the and people they rattle off their mm. facts back and forth with each other the average person can't figure it out one way or the, the other the advantage to a moral argument is that look you can argue with the morality all you want if you don't have um you, you know like let's talk morality when you when you get people talking about morality then they you know the the their little facts that they they trot out that they really truly believe and somebody else has facts just to the opposite you know, they suddenly become less important because the means don't justify the ends that's exactly right. In fact, uh, my partner, call, Perry Willis, calls this the war of competing studies, right? Yep. You've got your study. I've got my study. And this happens. You brought up minimum wage. It happens on guns. And what it turns out to be the case, Mark, is that most people are actually arguing from their position of morality in the first place. So if, for example, you came in with this really compelling piece of evidence that should be the death blow to your opponent's uh, view, uh -huh. uh, they're not going to change their mind because what's motivating them isn't these studies. It's this discussion about what they really believe morally. And so we want to begin having that discussion. Listen, the golden rule, uh, and I've been on to talk to you guys about the golden rule before too. This is a nearly ubiquitous belief. Uh, almost every religion yeah. uh, contains it. Many philosophical systems contain it. People, this is how they treat their friends and family. And then they've got kind of a silver rule approach, if you will, when they're out amongst complete strangers. They don't ask for ID checks. In fact, they walk around in many cases with you know headphones in their ears, paying very little attention to what's going on on them, th assuming that they're safe around complete strangers because it's not our normal practice to go up and hit people in the mouth, steal their things, uh, insult them even. It, it really isn't our normal way of, of behaving. And so what we're saying is why can't we take this thing that you believe in all other social settings and begin applying it in a political setting as well? All right. I want to see how that works. Uh, so you can stick with us and talk more, I'm sure. Yes, Jim? Yes. All right. More with Jim Babka from the Zero Aggression Project. We should give out the URL. It is up. It's online. This thing just launched this week. Is that right? 
Uh, well, it's going to launch tomorrow morning, and we're going to be, have a new tool that we're going to be presenting, a piece of software that's going to help people deal with options people bring up to the zero aggression principle. Dealing with objections. All right, stand by. We'll talk more about that uh, and some of the objections maybe as well. We've got Jim Babka with us here. I'm going to give out the URL anyway because there's something there. Zeroaggressionproject.org is the website. Go and bookmark that. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, etc. 855-450-FREE. Maybe you want to talk to Jim. He's here. And you can join us. 855-450-FREE. We'll continue with more Free Talk Live here in moments. Are you living with pain? So was Lisa, a brave Marine wounded in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers. I tried one-hour pain relief, and now I'm pain-free all day without dangerous side effects. And it works in less than one hour. Try it free for one week and pay only the shipping with no automatic shipments. Call 800-400-3610 right now or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-400-3610. 800-400-3610. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. It's very easy to be a criminal. All you need to burglarize a home is one simple household tool, a pair of scissors. If your home security system can be compromised by a criminal using scissors, then you're making it easy for them. Almost every home security system, even those sold by big name companies, has a weakness. The phone line. You shell out 1500 bucks, get locked into a long-term contract, and think you're safe. But a burglar can destroy your alarm in seconds with one snip. And when a burglar cuts your phone line, you're, you're defenseless. defenseless. Simply Safe Home Security is the smarter choice. Built by Harvard engineers, Simply Safe uses a wireless connection to call the cops. Scissors can't cut it, and that means your home stays safe. 24/7 professional monitoring is under $15 a month with no contract. Simply Safe Home Security keeps you safer than the other guys for half the cost. Protect your home with the alarm you can trust. Simply Safe. Go to simplysafedefense.com now for an exclusive 10% offer. That's simplysafedefense.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here on the live Sunday edition of the program here on Free Talk Live. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well, but if you uh, want to talk to Jim Babka from the Zero Aggression Project, then you cannot be on Skype because we can't conference two Skype lines together. That's just not possible. So you have to call us at 855-450-FREE. Now, if you're getting online on any kind of device... You need to protect yourself. Your internet service provider isn't going to protect your privacy. In fact, they're probably one of the uh, groups that is you know, keeping track of what you're doing online. They may be logging every website you visit and maybe keeping those logs for several years in some cases. You can solve that problem and also prevent criminals from sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets by grabbing the app from ProXPN. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, as well as Linux. You just get connected to ProXPN and you're good to go. You're protected from prying and spying. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, grab the app there, and get started. Ready uh, When you're ready, you're wanna, going to want to upgrade to their premium account so you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. It's a global virtual private network. The ability to privately torrent and to get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. All you have to do is use our discount code FTL50, which gives you 50% off the price of the regular monthly rate when you get the annual account over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Don't forget to use promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. By the way, that 50% off is good for the lifetime of your account, so whenever you renew for year number two, you get the same great deal. Uh, again, that's ProXPN.com slash FTL, code FTL50. As we go back to Jim Babka, he's with us here on Skype, and uh, Jim also with DC.org. But getting ready to launch... Tomorrow, officially, the Zero Aggression Project. The website's up right now, but you said there's some kind of a tool that's going to launch tomorrow. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. And, and again, the thrust of this project is to get people to communicate the zero aggression principle sort of on a, a moral basis rather than trying to argue sort of the, uh, the details of each issue. Is that right? Yeah, that's basically it. And I want to encourage people uh, – to come to our site, zeroaggressionproject.org, and sign up to get on the email list, because tomorrow morning we will give out the link to open the door to the first tool. Uh, we got a couple of tools planned. The first one uh, deals with the exceptions that people bring up. So if you suggest that we should not initiate force, you know, there's a concern. What if, if we what if we said goodbye to this bullying state? What if we said goodbye to big government? What would what would take its place? How would we handle things? And so there's these exceptions people make on and on specific in, in, issues. And we want to begin to address those issues. Tomorrow, we're going to open the door on drug prohibition. That will be the very first campaign that we're going to have. Uh, there's a number of panels that deal with this issue in a very unique way. Uh, first, as, as I said, we start off dealing with the morality question. We want to get it up front what this principle is and, and establish whether or not that influences people's opinion. If, I mean, if you thought about it this way, in this new way, about the zero aggression principle, do you really, are you really for drug prohibition? Uh, we, we also try to personalize the issue as we go on. We try to get people to understand that someone's going to have to actually initiate the force. Someone's actually going to have to go out and kick doors down, for example, and do no-knock raids. Someone's going to have to pull people over and arrest them mm -hmm. and throw them away for a long period of time. Someone's going to have to do that. Would you be willing to do that? And then we ask a very unique question before we get into any kind of policy uh, discussion with them. Uh, that question is we call the check writing question. And basically what we're going to ask people to do is to change their frame of mind for just a moment and pretend that everything that we're paying for with this big uh, government is free. I mean, sorry, it's not free. It's, it's something you sit down and write a check for. You have a choice. I can either write the check or not write it. So do you want to buy the program called Drug Prohibition? Do you want to sit down every month and write a check to pay for that program? Would you still pay for it? It now, certainly I, is inefficient, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> so far they've had, I don't know how many decades you're going to call the war on drugs. A lot of people say it started in the early 70s. Some people say it started in the early 80s. But whatever it is, um, you know, the government has had decades to eradicate drugs from America and stop kids from using them and from what I can tell either they're doing more or they're doing the same amount yeah. which is to say that we've spent billions possibly trillions I don't know the answer to that on crapola it's, government work programs for people who were I don't know it, could it, otherwise that, be doing other things 
Right. What we're going to do, Mark, in that vein specifically then is we're going to keep driving up the costs, basically. I mean, we're going to keep coming back and asking them, okay, do you still, would you still write the check? Would you still write the check? After we show them all of the different ways, uh, the different arguments that they may personally even have uh, that are failing, uh, we're going to show them, okay, once again, do you still want to pay this check? Uh, the navigation for this system will allow them to pick which panels they want to go to. We have an order that we've set out for them, but we allow them to kind of pick. So if there's a question or an objection or a portion of even this specific drug prohibition debate that really, really is the one they want to get the answer to, they will be able to find that. And listeners mm -hmm. and you guys will be able to also share those pages. You will have every one of these panels. So if you're looking for a specific argument, this thing starts to become a library for you, a mm -hmm. resource of, oh, wait a minute, you know, I'm in the middle of this discussion here on Facebook or with a friend. I can send this link or post this link and they can see uh, this particular argument as well. And all that will be a part of what we're calling a polling campaign, where we're going to do something that's not been done before. We're going to actually measure the success of our arguments. We're going to see how much this is moving or persuading people as, as they're going through. And we're doing this in part because after all these years at Downsides DC, we had this huge job of trying to get Congress to not do bad things and maybe even try to do a couple good things like our Read the Bills Act. And over the years, as people got their form letters back, they got discouraged about the results. It, it just, things just weren't happening fast enough. And I think some of our expectations need to be more measured. If I take, if, if, if I'm in a process of discussion with people over a period of time, and, uh, and I can move them in my direction so that at one point maybe they were very opposed to me, but now today they're really unsure. They're not sure they're op opposed to me anymore. They're not on my side yet. I haven't won them over. That's a huge amount of progress, frankly. And we need to be able to begin seeing what we're doing, what arguments are working, how they're working. So there's all kinds of data up on the page about the movement and how people are responding both to individual questions and to the argument overall. They'll be able to see all of that in real time, including if it's not working. They'll be able to see see that we're, we're, we're open, we're naked, we're honest with that stuff, and we're going to start with this objection uh, to the zero aggression principle, whether or not drug prohibition is such an objection. You know, I was uh, taking a train ride with a, uh, and I ended up sat, seated beside just, uh, I was on my way to Washington, D.C., and I ended up seated besi beside a, a senior staffer for a senator who I will not name because I like this guy a lot. Um, I, you know, got to talking to him. This is one of those rare conversations. You really connect with somebody. But, you know, this guy, and I'll tell you, he's a Democrat. And what he said, this was the day after. This was a Wednesday. The Tuesday was the Republican mid uh, midterm uh, election, and the Republicans had just won uh, pretty handily. And I asked him what he, you know, what, 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 what scares you? Uh, are you worried about the Republicans? And... The day after, this guy had no appeared to show no emotion on his face. He's like, no, I don't, I don't care about the Republicans at all. Their demographic, their demographics are going to kill them, uh, meaning that you know Republicans are old white people and they're dying off, and that the you know the scramble is for new demographics that are coming down, and Republicans are losing that. He said, however, what does frighten me is the libertarian philosophy. Um, he was concerned that the ideas of the non-aggression principle, because, I mean, obviously these are antithetical to large government. Oh, yeah. That concerned him. Jim, stand by. We're going to bring you back okay. here in a moment here. More with Jim Babka from the Zero Aggression Project at zeroaggressionproject.org. The site officially launches tomorrow, but you can get a sneak peek at it right now. We're coming up on Free Talk Live. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Following reports that local full-blown alcoholic Ken Matheson has such great friends that let him drink himself to death right before their eyes, the 32-year-old man spoke to reporters during a typical evening of binging with his closest friends. Man, these guys are like brothers to me. I don't know what I'd do without them. The chemically dependent man who can reportedly always count on his friends to look the other way, facilitate belligerent behavior, and encourage his self-destructive impulses informed reporters that the members of his tight-knit circle are, quote, the best buddies a guy could ask for. Can you just, can you just, can you just shut the f*** up? Seriously. Just, just shut the f*** up. I lost them. Oh, I lost them. F*** back then. Ugh. Keep going. What the f*** are you looking at? I love you, man. I love you. Check this week's Onion Review for you. further developments. <laughs> I love you. Oh, God, I love everybody. This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here and bring up anything. 855-450-FREE. Though right now, if you call in, you should ideally have a question for our guest, Jim Babka. He is with us from the Zero Aggression Project at zeroaggressionproject.org, where the site is officially launching tomorrow with a, a tool that will help communicate uh, the ideas of freedom, specifically the Zero Aggression Principle, uh, on specific issues, and I haven't actually tried this tool out yet. Now, Jim, you said it was going to launch tomorrow, but I feel like I've been able to pull it up here successfully tonight. Is it is it fully operational right now? Um, you know, it, it's possible it may be, so they may be able to get a sneak peek. Let me just go look myself because it is I went possible. to zeroaggressionproject.org. I clicked, what do you think? Yes. And then yes, I clicked the drug curtain. The curtain was supposed to be lifted uh, sometime today, <laughs> and yes, it is lifted. Okay. Well, like well, we have a tool on this show, too. Yes. <laughs> you talking about yourself, Mark? <laughs> no, no, I'm not, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yes, people could sneak in and take a look at it and start using it right now if they wanted to. Good. Well, that's more, I mean, you know, that's better for instant gratification, right? It's it's hard to get on the radio and talk about, you guys should do this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you know, the only concern I have is that I don't know what, I, I, it does not appear that my lead developer has erased all of the beta testers, ah. uh, some of whom have some very strange names. So it's at some point tonight, he's going to be erasing these okay. and you won't be there anymore. But what will not be erased and what I really want to encourage people to do is to sign up. Uh, for an email, follow right. us at uh, Twitter at Zap the State, 
uh, get on the email list or follow us at Facebook at Zero Aggression Project. Uh, you can find us in any of those places. Make sure if you go on Facebook that you set it to get notifications. Yeah. Uh, so you get you know so you actually do see the stuff that we put up because Facebook kind of makes it hard for groups like ours to communicate. Uh, as you guys well know, oh, yeah. uh, with everybody that's following you. So if you really want to make sure you're staying in the loop, you know, set it to get notifications or sign up for the emails because it won't just be this campaign. Before this week is over, we will be releasing a second one a second a set of uh, object, uh, exceptions. Uh, we have another one that will be coming up the beginning of next week. We're going to be hitting issues ranging from Social Security to corporate welfare uh, to whether or not you should be allowed to hire illegal immigrants. Uh, should you be able to leave military service if you object to the war that's going on? We're going to talk about a lot of things uh, as we go forward. We've got uh, quite a few of these campaigns uh, sl some in some stage of draft or or concept and and uh, so we're going to keep rolling these things out and the first few are going to come very quickly if you don't want to miss it sign up at zeroaggressionproject.org so you know i'm brand new to this right this is my first time really even visiting the website where it's really our first time talking about it in in detail and so if i'm following you correctly and please correct me if i'm wrong uh the zero aggression project website at zeroaggressionproject.org exists to be a tool for liberty-oriented people and also to kind of show to people who aren't necessarily on board yet. That's exactly right. So, you know, in a lot of these conversations that, that we have with people who are not libertarians, uh, we find that a debate or an argument begins to ensue, and people don't really listen. Uh, we call this reactive thinking. Mm. They, they spend their time thinking about the brilliant thing they're going to say next. And, of course, maybe you're doing some of that, too. You're trying to think of the brilliant thing you're going to say in response. I it, blame it, Rush Limbaugh for this. Um, you know, his, <laughs> his letter, his newsletter where how to defeat liberals in an argument. I mean, what— <laughs> What? <laughs> exactly right. what's the point in humiliating your friends and family at dinner parties after a couple of beers? What is the point in that? Um, either, either we want to talk to people we love and care about in mm. a way that's going to convince them, or we shouldn't talk to them about these issues at all. The best thing to do is just leave it aside. You know, you you it's, if somebody wants to, uh, to join debate club, they can go sign up at their local college. Right, that's exactly right. And I, what, what, where we're coming at this from is we're hoping that uh, we can create a more reflective uh, conversation. So, you know, people tend, I mean, some people do shout at their television set, but the television set never responds to their arguments, so they don't do it very long, right? They might even shout at you. I've guys been doing it for wrong. years. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, but you do stop eventually, and you realize <laughs> that nobody's going to change their mind as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, they may be shouting at the radio right now, listening to us, but they'd actually have to call in if they wanted uh, to be heard. At 855 450 3733. See, old radio host sh sets you up there. <laughs> and so so what we're what we're saying here is that we want people to kind of sit and kind of passively begin to, to really be able to ponder these ideas, like engage with them mentally and emotionally. And so that we're going to present these ideas in a non-threatening way where they can vote against it. If you don't like the idea, vote against it. And if you want to you know, tilt the scales, get your friends who are going to vote against it to come there too. You're going to have that same equal opportunity where we can have this dialogue begin and start uh, but it can be done in a more reflective as opposed to an argumentative or reactive kind of way. Yeah, I think it's really it's really interesting. And uh, zeroaggressionproject.org is the site. So you want uh, you're inviting our listeners tonight to go get a sneak peek on the site, try out this new tool for sort of explaining drug prohibition and and hopefully persuading people to move more in favor of you know ending drug prohibition by embracing the zero aggression principle and really coming to understand it um so that's all available right now plus again signing up for the email list which i think is going to be really important to give people yeah i think that's the most important thing that they can do because if they come and start using the site now their answers are going to get kind of erased mm -hmm. at some point this evening because we are launching tomorrow uh, so one person on the team turned that page on, and another was supposed to have erased it, and he's supposed <laughs> to do that by midnight. So if you come in after midnight, you should still be able to, you know, you should see a fresh page. But I really, I don't want people to forget about it. You know, yep. you hear something, and then you go away, and you forget to do it. Please don't do that. Sign up at the Zero Aggression Project right now, because we will be sending out the message tomorrow morning. There'll be another one of these issues coming out before this week's over, and yet another one to start the week following. And it's, I, I'm, I'm really going to be excited to see how this, this works. 
um, you know, to see our creature, you know, move out into the world. But it's an opportunity for us to begin having a very different kind of discussion from the one that we've typically had. Zeroaggressionproject.org is the website. I think that's what's really valuable here is is to change the paradigm. Um, the, the 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 what did you call it? The war of competing studies. Yes. Yeah, the, yes. the, the war of competing studies where people talk about the facts on one side and the facts on the other. This way of uh, organizing the government is more efficient than that way of organizing the government is more efficient. Whatever. These these arguments, they've been going on for decades, and it gets nowhere. Um, I think that uh, just having a conversation about the morality of it, trying to, to focus on that, it's worth it's worth trying out and seeing if that works. I, I do, too. You know, there's this thing out there called confirmation bias where people mm -hmm. seek out uh, the, the, the party hymn book. Right. Uh, they, they find the people that they associate with uh, in, in either Democrat and Republican in most cases. And then they all sing out of the same hymn book. So they've got their favorite talk show host and they've got their favorite cable channel and they've got their favorite publications or websites that they read. And so they know all the answers, even if they completely are somewhat internally or logistically uh, contradictory. They they know what all the words are for their party at that hour. They know what to say. And they know what the arguments are. And they st spend a lot of time trying to identify whether or not you're one or the other and, and yes, then they argue do. about that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, though, how many shows are there where you have a moral philosophy. Now, you guys are an exception. I hate saying this on your show, but how many people have a, a moral philosophy show that they're following? How many people have a moral philosophy cable network that they're watching? Yeah, it just doesn't exist out there. We just had and a really little internet burp there. Go ahead. Say that yeah. again. How many? And another one. Uh, how many people internet. have a moral philosophy cable channel, right? Yeah, I okay. mean, this is a very... <laughs> on some bromide or some a sound clip or some man i am so sorry we are having serious uh internet issues here jim i'm gonna say thank you man for uh, for coming on the show here tonight it's been great i uh, love having you on and everything that you do has been wonderful so i'm sure this is going to be a great project in fact i'm i'm more excited about this than uh, than i have been about downsize dc not that downsize dc was a bad thing and it continues on um, but, you know, it can it can feel like you're running up against a brick wall when you're talking to those politicians. And this is actually a way to persuade individuals to come on board with the zero aggression principle. And I think that uh, I think it's exciting. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you being on Jim. Uh, Jim Babka from zero aggression project dot org. Go there. Get signed up for their email list. It is waiting for you. And then they're going to officially launch tomorrow. So if you're listening to us live here tonight on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live and you've you've gone to zeroaggressionproject.org, just remember they're going to be hitting the reset button sometime tonight. So the comments and, you know, the people that have already used the site, that's going to get kind of reset. So you're getting a sneak peek. So use the email sign up and get on board with this. I think it's going to be good. ZeroAggressionProject.org. More coming up. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without a Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE. If you had called into the program earlier expecting open phones, which is normally what the show is, and you didn't get that, well, now is a good time to call back because our guest, Jim Babka, uh, is done for, for the moment. I'm sure we'll have him back at some point to talk more about the Zero Aggression Project as it uh, begins to grow. It will be launched at some point tonight at zeroaggressionproject.org. Coming up. Mark, you've got a story about a vegan mom who has been ordered by a court to feed her son, what, what something besides vegan food? Proper yeah, food. Yeah, proper food. What is proper food? And where is this happening? We're going to find out more about that here in a moment. But I want to, uh, well, actually, Mark, I want you to let our audience know about Fort Galt. Yeah, what Fort Galt is, is it's um, essentially a it's a condominium complex, but a very small one. Uh, the the living units are very small. In some cases, as small as like three and a half feet by ten feet. That's a pretty small room. Mm -hmm. All it's meant for is for you to have a you know a desk and a and a bed in there. And what you're supposed to do is hang out in the the common areas with other entrepreneurs and uh, you know small business people, freelancers, young professionals, their families. And I think it's going to be a very interesting project for the right folks. This will, you know, it's down down in Chile. So if you're looking to get out of the country, this is really, you know, great for that. Um, sounds like an awesome way to do things. You can also rent out your unit to uh, to folks. Uh, they're going to have a an opportunity to do that. So there'll be sort of a, a hotel-y aspect to it. And um, I have some audio going on in my ear. Thank you. <laughs> so... I don't I think, know what that was. Sorry. Go I on. think it's a uh, it, it's a really interesting project and an opportunity to make some money in, maybe in the process. So go check them out. FortGalt.com. F-O-R-T-G-A-L-T, as in John Galt. G-A-L-T dot com. FortGalt.com. All right. So last night we teased this story. We didn't have a chance to get to it. It was It's out of Italy. Is that right? This That's is right. US. 
Uh, what's going on, and where's the source? Uh, Breitbart is the uh, source. Um, Oliver Lane, the author. Now, I did go see this. I clicked through and found uh, the, the link here in El Let Echo de Bergamo. Uh, so I have you no saw idea. the Italian version of the story? Yes, okay. and I know enough Spanish that I can look at some words in there mm-hmm. and say, that's what it's talking about. Ah, okay. They do have a Google Translate that might come in handy. I didn't know how to work it on the site. Gotcha. Like, there wasn't a link. Would you like to translate this? So I didn't. Um, And I also thought, why would I translate this, really? Because am I going to read the translated version on the air? No, it would sound terrible. Yeah, it would be awful. So I decided, I'll just go back to Breitbart. It's just that, you know, Breitbart has kind of that righty tinge thing to it. So, So I just wanted to make sure I checked on it a little bit. Going on. Disagreements over the correct diet for a 12-year-old boy became so heated for one divorced Italian couple, the father took the matter to court. The matter to court, not the mother to court. Well, and the, eh, the both. <laughs> and won, meaning the mother mm. must now cook um, him meat, meaning him, the, uh, the, uh, the, the 12-year-old. So you have a vegan forced by the court to cook meat that for her child. That doesn't seem right. Well... I, I'm going to talk to you about this a lot, but I want to yeah. read the story because I think Please. that this is all very interesting. The battle over the health of the young boy began in 2006 when the mother began eating what she identifies as a macrobiotic diet, an extremist form of veganism in which the main food uh, is grains. <laughs> an extremist form of veganism? Is that what they just said? Well, How can I, you get more extreme than veganism? I mean, that's pretty extreme on its own. Yeah, that's extreme. <laughs> if it's if you if the main thing to eat is grains, yeah. that's excluding vegetation Vegetables? and incredible <laughs> fruits and a whole can variety. Can you even call that vegan? It's a macrobiotic diet, okay. is what she calls it. Yeah. Um, I think that the, they use the term vegan to describe to people that there is no no meat, no meat, and no animal products at all. Got it. So, yeah, wow. I mean, it's um, it's amazing. So it's boring. Well, it does, um, but yeah, let's go on here. To the exclusion of all else, the court heard that the main food in the mother's house was boiled plain rice, but when the father took custody of the child at weekends, he was uh, determined to give him a proper diet. Mm -hmm. When away from his mother, the boy visited his paternal grandmother with his father, and they would eat great feasts, including polenta, Italian sausages, gorgonzola, as well as McDonald's burgers. Uh, the mother, so, you know, the things that young people eat, I guess. And older people, too. And the things that people eat, generally. Yeah. So, I mean, I see home-cooked meals here. I see meals out. I guess I'm not surprised with either of those. And I guess that's what you should be able to do when you take your son um, out on a little visit, a mm-hmm. weekend visit. The mother, in turn, accused her former husband of harming the child by feeding him meat, which she claimed gave him a stomach ache. Mm. Um, which I'm sh- I'm sure it did give him a bit of a like he felt his stomach after you know eating nothing but rice all week <laughs> that suddenly you know you're getting to eat some some meat processing and, something different yeah, yeah like I suppose there's going to be some some differences going on there the court has now ruled that the mother must cook meat for her son at least once a week mm. and I'm interested in this all around I guess my first thought is. This child's 12 years old. What's the problem here? Who is arguing what? This is a 12-year-old young man. In some in societies gone by, this would be a man getting ready for a wife, okay? Mm. So the idea that this young person can't decide whether he wants uh, to eat meat or not. Yeah, nobody asked him apparently. Yeah, you know, I don't it, know. I mean, it I, wouldn't surprise me if this whole court thing went down with mom saying what she had to say, dad saying what he had to say, and the judge making a decision without anyone ever putting the 12 year old on the stand and saying, look, buddy, what do you like? What do you want to do? Right. Well, I, I think that, okay, so first off, the mother should not have to prepare a meal she does not wish to prepare. I agree. It sounds like slavery to me. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I think that she is completely within her rights to prepare the meal she wishes to prepare. However, I think that this young man should be able to uh, have the, the food he wants. So as his father wants to give him money so that he mm-hmm. can buy some meat yeah. so he can keep it in the fridge so his delivery. little butt can get up and get a skillet out and fry up some yeah. burger or whatever, then fine. That's cool, too. 
I don't think that the mother should because or order him a pizza or something like that. Right. I mean, I think that the only thing the court should do in this circumstance, uh, I don't think the mother should have to order a pizza no, either. No, no. Like he could have dad order it for him or something like that. Whatever. Yeah, I don't think that she should be forced into any of this, but I do think that, you know, the young man is responsible for, to some extent, what goes into his gullet, and that's his business. The dad, of course, should be able to feed the child what he wants, um, what to, to pay to give the child food, mm-hmm. um, the young man food, when he goes out. And then if young man wishes to have nothing but boiled rice, then the young man should be able to bring boiled rice with him and, and heat it up on the stove or whatever it is that he wishes to do. I think that this is a really sort of silly argument for a 12-year-old. But when you start getting younger, that's when I begin to have a problem. So um, there's a certain age when, like, my son is seven. Mm-hmm. I don't think... At least my son is not prepared to begin making uh, to make his own meals. He would like to choose candy and cookies. Yeah, right? he, he certainly would choose those things if given yeah. a preference. But even even so, he's not prepared to prepare much of anything. Like right. he can open up a, a granola bar himself uh, out of a package, but you know, heating things up on the stove and stuff like that, he's certainly not prepared at seven years old. Uh, so I think that when you know below a certain age, I don't know what that age is. That's not my job to figure that out. I'd have to do some research, and I'd go around and asking people, most of them women, as to what age uh, women with who have had children, what age children are most prepared to begin uh, making food. But I think twelve is about it. Maybe maybe it's a little younger. Maybe it's ten. The um, but below that age, I really worry about a vegan diet. Mm. Um, so if a couple, for I instance, imagine the vegans worry about a meat filled diet. I bet right? they do, and. I, but I mean, it, let me ask you this. So um, the vegans have their opinion, and the non-vegans have their opinions. Many and many of them are quite opposed to each other's uh, diets. Yeah, sure. I can assure you, my wife, who food is pra- to whom food is practically a religion, uh, would find this diet to be completely unacceptable for a growing child. And I would be even more on the side. I'm a protein guy. I okay. believe young people, especially um, young males, is need to have no protein. protein in vegetables. It's um, incomplete proteins that have to be paired up properly. Hmm. Um, I can't. Exp- you know, She's not I, even feeding him vegetables. She's feeding him grain. I'm sure that the there's uh, going to be some arguments on their side that they're uh, providing complete proteins. Right. I'm sure they're going to say that. Um, so let's say that they are pairing up incomplete proteins to make complete proteins. Hmm. This will always be the argument that comes from the vegetarians. Um, and, you know, maybe it's right, maybe it's not. I've seen vegetarian bodybuilders, and those guys can be in great shape. All right, but Mark, I mean, for all your fears, and by the way, I don't, you know, I'm not taking any side on like, mm-hmm. what people should eat. I think everybody's different, and they should have whatever they darn well please. Uh, but Surely there are vegan families with children who were able to raise their children without serious health maladies, right? Like, I mean, you're wor- you're worried, which says to me that you think that this could be damaging uh, raising kids in the in long term. Yeah. In the long term. So how long are we talking about? 20, 30 years, 50 years? Well, I don't think they'll reach, they'll reach their proper height. Um, mm-hmm. I'm worried about them not reaching their um, the muscle mass that they could otherwise have. Share your thoughts here. Maybe you are in a, one of these vegan families or you were raised vegan and you can uh, explain what it was like. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. A few days ago, Brooke Tudine posted an inspirational quote on her wall that got 17 likes and three comments. Thumbs up, Brooke. Geico also wants to make a comment. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico. And nothing says inspiration better than saving money. Well, except for those posters that say things like teamwork, excellence, and make it happen. Hashtag keep climbing. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. 
Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com you're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, May 31st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.76 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,191 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $234. Antiwar.com reports the USA Freedom Act, an extremely watered-down reform bill, which some argue actually expands NSA surveillance capabilities, is coming up for a hugely important and likely very close vote on Sunday with the future of the USA Patriot Act Section 215, which the bill renews in the balance. Section 215 expires on Monday and the USA Freedom Act requires 60 votes to pass procedural hurdles. Last weekend, the Senate managed only 57 votes in favor, but some officials say they can come up with the three additional votes to ensure its passage without debate on the amendments. Senator Rand Paul has vowed a filibuster in an effort to prevent the extension from going through on Sunday, saying he was determined to force the expiration of the NSA illegal spy program. Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn had previously expressed confidence that Paul would give in, saying he was a constructive guy. This weekend, he's condemning him, however, along with others who are surprised that his efforts to forestall extension were more than just a one-off grandstanding effort going into the recess. With the filibuster, Senator Paul can likely make things extremely difficult for the Republican leadership, but even if they do manage to force a vote on Sunday, there is no guarantee those three extra votes will be there. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley announced his 2016 presidential bid Saturday morning, mounting a campaign against presumptive favorite Democrat Hillary Clinton for the party's nomination. Announcing his bid in Baltimore, the city where he got his political start, O'Malley called on a new generation of leadership to rebuild the American dream. The former twice-elected Baltimore mayor focused on the American dream, racial tensions, and climate change, laying out his plans for his campaign. He said, we saved our country before and we will save our country now. We will do that by rebuilding the dream. Speaking at Federal Hill Park, O'Malley stressed income equality, the need to rebuild the country, and focused on the role Wall Street executives played in the 2008 financial crisis, saying, Tell me how it is in this country you can get pulled over if you have a broken taillight, but if you wreck the country, you are absolutely untouchable. O'Malley has seated himself firmly to the left of Clinton, opposing the Keystone XL pipeline and a pending Pacific Rim trade agreement, and favoring expanding social security benefits. O'Malley is the third candidate to formally announce a bid for the 2016 Democratic nomination, joining Hillary Clinton and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Other considering a bid include Vice President Joe Biden, former Virginia Senator Jim Webb, and former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. 
Reuters reports rain caused flooding on roads in part of Texas on Saturday after severe weather killed at least 24 people during the week and prompted President Barack Obama to declare a disaster in the state. Texas has endured record rainfall in May. This week, flooding turned streets into rivers, ripped homes off foundations, swept over thousands of vehicles, and trapped people in cars and houses. Obama signed a disaster declaration late Friday to free up federal funds to help rebuild areas of Texas slammed by the storms. No estimate has been given for the total damage done in Texas. The Hayes County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that the bodies of two women were recovered on Saturday from the Blanco River. That raised the death toll from the flooding to at least 24. Flash flood warnings were in place in several counties in North Texas, including Dallas County. The National Weather Service forecasts scattered thunderstorms along a cold front stretching from Texas to the Northeast United States. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A fully leveled up video game character marvels at how far he's come, and the milk rushing through a jug handle is having the time of its life. This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, top executives from the U.S. financial sector announced they're about ready to ruin the world again. Representatives from all major banking and investment institutions said that more than enough time has passed since they last caused a major global economic meltdown and confirmed they're pretty much fully prepared to bring about a brand new worldwide financial crisis. We feel like we've given people enough time to get comfortable again. Consumer spending has increased. Housing market has rebounded. So yeah, we're all set to go ahead and ruin the global economy again. And in other news, the perfect gift for a local man is unfortunately a gift certificate to Lowe's Cinemas. Mall shoppers look on in awe as a helpless 15-year-old girl is viciously torn apart by a pack of her peers. And a drunk pilot decides to pull over onto a cloud until he sobers up. You will now hear three gong strikes and a recitation of the great chant before being ushered to the hallowed garden. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program here, talking about your freedom to feed your kids what you want. And there's a lady in Italy who has been ordered by a court now to feed her son meat at least once a week. She's a vegan, and like what it was described by the Breitbart article as an extreme vegan, which this is new to me, um, the idea being that in her veganism, she's only feeding grain to her son. Largely. Right? Uh, so, like, no vegetables, Macrobiotic no diet is what they're calling it. Uh, basically- No, you know, I didn't claim that it was no vegetables and no fruits. Okay. Largely. Okay. Largely but not grain-based. that much vegetables or fruits. Yeah. And it's basically the opposite of what we do at my house, where my wife has gone largely paleo and is almost doing no grains at all. Hmm. Um, we're eating- A lot of salads and a lot of vegetation because, you know, we've got our own garden and all that good stuff. But we're certainly like I'd go on strike if we weren't getting meat. So she's she whatever it is that she thinks she's going to do, she isn't going to do it without meat. So and and this also kind of the story that you're that you shared with us earlier, Mark, it 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 also has the issue within it of custody rights. And I don't think we really expound And the age on that. of majority yeah. and a variety of things. This is a 12-year-old. It's not like he can't f- cook his own food. Um, or, I mean, at the very least, he should be able to decide where he wants to go. I mean, I to you know to ask a child who's still under the care of his parents to cook his own food, I think is kind of excessive. But you know, to what? say to him, to say to him, hey, if you want to go to your dad's house, then you should be able to. I mean, shouldn't the kid be able to make the decisions to who he wants to live with? Why should that be in the hands of the court? I mean, shouldn't he be able to say, hey, I get to go to, you know, I go to dad's house on the weekends. He takes me to McDonald's. I get like, you know, they went through this laundry list of all this great sounding food that he had, excluding the McDonald's from the list of great food. Uh, So it sounded like he got a real like well-balanced meal when he's over at his dad's house. Why shouldn't he just be able to say, you know what? This vegan stuff is junk. I'm out of here. Well, um, I agree with what you're saying. I, I'd like to go back to this nonsense you're talking about as what a 12-year-old shouldn't be responsible for their own food in the in the house. Um, I mean, who do you think is responsible for feeding a 12-year-old? We're talking about a, uh, this the, is— The parents or guardians would be the ones responsible. Do you mean by, by feeding, do you mean buy the food or do you mean prepare the food? Well, I mean, in my lifetime, I was, you know, my parents made food. 
for yeah, me. I you got know, that. Sort but of one of those things that parents are expected to do for their kids. I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I, I mean, mean I, I guess you can argue that there is no obligation on the parent's part to prepare food for the person. But in, in, in my opinion, then, there shouldn't be any obligation for that person to stay there. You know, I don't think there's any obligation. Dad's house where dad's going to make him uh, you know, some steaks and he should be able to go there. Fine. I think if there's a millionaire down the block that wants to uh, you know, have him fanned by women in bikinis, he should be able to go there, too. But the world isn't <laughs> okay. full of people who are going to prepare food for you. And at 12 years old, you're old enough to make your own mm. meals and you're old enough to prepare the meals for the house and mm. you're old enough to help upkeep the house. You see, when the parents spend a lot of time, money and energy putting this thing over your head called yeah. a roof that keeps the, the rain forget, off. Your parents also brought you into the world. So sort of some, somewhat of an obligation. On when them, does this obligation end? Uh, well, I guess legally at age 18. Oh, now you're going to go with legally. Yeah. Legally, your ass can't leave. Well, I don't. Uh, I I think that somebody should be able to move out whenever they feel like they want to move Agreed. out. Whenever they're ready to uh, take on the world. So I don't believe that. You know, I don't think there's any real firm details to these obligations. But it's just sort of the general idea is if you're going to have a kid, you should probably be down with taking care of the kid. Uh, that's right. not about. This isn't about taking care of somebody. Yeah. The, Twelve years old, that kid should have eh, probably one night a week where they prepare the meals for the family. That's a nice idea. Just saying. But that would just be an agreement that you would have between, you know, the child and you, right? If the, Isn't everything an if agreement? If the child says, no, I don't want to cook your, you know, the meal. Well, then, you know, you can't not Here's a Pop-Tart. Good it. night. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're talking about here is a judge who's decided that uh, this mom is going to have to cook things that she doesn't want to cook. For her son. And so the courts get involved in these family disagreements. I mean, while I think it's your family and it's your business, if you want to throw a Pop Tart at a kid, that's your business and it's none of mine. Oh, now mine. I'm throwing a Pop Tart. Like, it sounded like the kid didn't want to participate in the right. family by helping prepare a meal that's that no... he has had, you know, does, hundreds and maybe thousands of meals prepared yeah. for him up to that point in his life. And now he doesn't want to take a little responsibility. That kid sounds like a 33 year old who's never had children, <laughs> who's only ever taken care of at home. Mama yeah. made all the fe- meals for him. Good. I mean, that's that's the way I think the relationship is supposed to work in general is <laughs> no. where kids get the, the parents take the care of The relationship is you're teaching this young human yeah. how to be an older human. Mm. Older humans can prepare their own food. 12-year-old can begin to learn how to prepare yeah. food. Some 12-year-olds are probably saddled, and rightly so, with the entire preparing of all the food meals in the house. Now, they should have other things done for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like because I don't think that uh, a young person should have that many chores, but yeah, I think a twelve-year-old certainly is is prepared. You know, is prepared mentally and physically to prepare meals. Well, when I was growing up, my parents, uh, I had certain chores to do, but I was you know given a, a reward for them, right? Like they would give me an allowance, as it was called, um, and that was sort of in- concomitant with doing whatever chores I had to do. Well, the way we do it at my house is that uh, chores are, uh, there's there's some things that you have to do in order to live in the house, mm-hmm. right? Like you're here, you're taking up space, your skin cells are sloughing off onto the floor. Yeah. So, um, you know, a certain level of cleaning up that's the responsibility. And you know, like clean Jack's, your room. Yeah, you got to keep your room clean. You got to help with the, the, you know, the cleaning of the house. You're using the bathroom. You're using the kitchen. You know, those kind of things. Um, if it's something above and beyond, then well, then you have to. Uh, then we're going to pay you. So, I decided to move out onto a big farm. Jack didn't. So if I want Jack to do some pig food, there should be some uh, financial yeah. reciprocity in that area. I'd say I'd say that's how it worked with me when I was growing up, right? Like I didn't get paid to clean my room either, mm-hmm. right? I got paid to take the trash out. Um, the trash would go out anyway, but you're dropping things in the trash, so I don't know where exactly. No, the whole house, the whole house trash, right? So I, right. I, had to take I understand, but you some of that trash was your trash, right? Like that was mm-hmm. waste that you created as a person in the yep. house. I think to some extent this is an opportunity that parents are giving, uh, you know, to give you some money, so to get you to do something so that you could learn to budget. It wasn't as much. Like, I think it's it, this is very difficult for parents to exactly come up with the right things that pe- kids should be compensated for. But I don't think that it was your your God-given right to get paid to take that trash out.
I think that that's something. No, that parents- was a deal. That was a, an agreement that we made. That was the trash is their responsibility. It's their Why? house. It's their damn house. Just like the kids, their responsibility because they brought the kid into the world. You don't bring the kid into the world and then expect the kid to do everything for itself. No, you don't. Um, you were probably not, you know, doing this at two years old. But they very well could have said, okay. All the trash that goes in this, you put your trash in this can, mm-hmm. you have to take your trash out. Yeah, they and could have said that. They didn't make you pay for electricity. They didn't make you, um, you know, compensate for no, all kinds of stuff. No, they shouldn't because they brought me into the world. It's their responsibility to take care of their child, their ward. If you don't want the responsibilities of a kid, I don't. If you don't want the responsibilities of a kid, you shouldn't bring one into the world. The... It's not the responsibilities. We're teaching a young adult mm-hmm. how to be an older adult. Yeah. So as we move, there's there's a spectrum of zero to eighteen, and as we tick by on those uh, you know numbers through seven, eight, nine, ten, the responsibilities get larger because you see at eighteen you're supposed to. Theoretically, I understand the America's full of people who aren't, but theoretically, you're prepared to be an adult and take care of all these responsibilities. Yeah. So at 17, you should be doing the vast majority of those things on your own. I'm not saying I disagree with you here. I'm just saying it sounded like you you were saying that parents don't have obligations to take care of their kids. And I think that you can make an argument for that, but generally... If you're going to bring something into the world, you should be prepared to take care of it. Well, I, I that's do, how I feel. About I do it. wonder. I cre- concur with that statement. Um, I just don't. I think that that statement is really subjective for yeah, each individual, and they figure out how that goes for them and their household. And I'm willing to let them do that, um, and you know, largely stay away. I'm very concerned in the area of veganism. Well, you were saying you think that uh, veganism – now, do you also think this about vegetarianism where uh, it will stunt growth and things like that? No, I think vegetarians – you know, look, some people call themselves vegetarians. They eat fish and chicken, right? Uh, So I don't even know what a vegetarian Mm. is. But most vegetarians will eat things like eggs and uh, drink milk and that sort of thing. So animal products, I think, are where the best proteins come from. So – I don't have a problem with vegetarianism in that way. All right. Well, what are you going to do about parents who are vegans? I, I mean, don't know. I mean, it's again, it's not. I don't think it's any of your damn business. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. What do you think? You can share your thoughts with us. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO. Uh, MBA. Uh, nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI. Uh, The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! 
the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We're back with more Free Talk Live. The live Sunday edition continues here. Mark says he's worried about a vegan diet, an extreme vegan diet. Uh, one that focuses more on grain than it even does vegetables. Not for adults. Just for oh, young Only people. for kids. So she's cooking a s- standard vegan diet for herself, but a different diet for her son? No. Um, my concern only rests with young people. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. So what's going on here is there's a woman in Italy who's been ordered by a judge to cook her son meat at least once a week uh, because of some concern about you know his possible issues with his health. His dad would like to have him with a more balanced diet or what he believes to be a more balanced diet. But, of course, the vegans out there are going to say that everything's fine uh, with their diet, that, you know, it's not going to stunt someone's growth and that, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can make this thing work. Uh, at least that's what I suspect. When I was looking on the Internet briefly, I, I did find, you know, at least vegetarians saying that they are fine after having been raised vegetarian. I couldn't really find briefly uh, what the vegans were saying. Well, but I suspect it'd be the same statements. I did look up um, some stuff about this, and vegans, you know, they they advise you to be careful. First off, they say that the uh, the most important thing uh, for young for babies essentially is an animal product. Make sure that, that this baby gets an animal product called breast milk. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it's interesting <laughs> that you know basically we're talking about a consenting animal here, and so that's fine. Um, uh, but you know, nonetheless, it made me think. Oh, yeah, cow. Cows are called vegetarians, but they drink their mother's milk. That's an animal product. When I have yeah. their mother's milk, that's a problem. When they have their mother's milk, it's natural and good. Interesting. So, um, okay, interesting. Yeah, I think there's some coercion generally with the way that uh, breast milk is, uh, with the, the cow's milk is gotten from cows. They they're concerned that the babies are taken away. Some farms do. Um, you know, just take sort of the extra milk that's left over. They they breed cows that produce a lot of milk, and the baby can't. You know, drink it all. They um, will at some point, uh, you know, wean the baby away from the mother. Um, and, you know, then they'll take the extra milk there for a long time. And, and so they do get it in a much more humane fashion than perhaps the the big, the big milk does. All right. Uh, so toll free number tonight, if you want to join the discussion here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I want to let you know about electronic pickpocketing. This could affect you. Maybe it already has affected one of your loved ones. Uh, And as more of these credit cards and debit cards are given RFID chips, the odds become greater that it's going to affect you at some point. This is what happens when a thief passes near you with a scanner that can read the data that's on those RFID chips in credit cards and debit cards. And the thief can then use that information to charge your credit cards. 
for the thief's purchases or worse yet, compromise your identity. Now, thanks to ID Stronghold, there's an easy way to prevent electronic pickpocketing from happening to you. ID Stronghold has been making products to block electronic pickpocketing since 2005. Some of their most loyal customers are military personnel that place a high value on personal security. And now you can also have that same protection in the form of great leather RFID blocking wallets made by ID Stronghold. That's right. All you need to do is switch your wallet for a quality leather wallet from ID Stronghold with built-in protection against electronic pickpocketing. Visit IDStronghold.com. See their huge selection of his and hers wallets. That's IDStronghold.com and tell them that Ian Freeman sent you. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, Chris, listening in the police state of Connecticut. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Chris. Hey, good evening, guys. Um, nice constructive banter tonight. I, I like to listen to it. I didn't even want to call and interrupt, but I, oh, I did want to talk about this um, child abuse possibility when feeding one's child and raising ch- children. Yeah, please. Uh, myself, currently, I, I am a paleo dieter. I think it does wonders. I'd recommend it for everybody at any rate. Um, I do think that woman is bat s crazy for feeding her kid grain, and I think that could potentially be, or not, not for feeding her grain, but for exclusively like grain. I think you need to get some protein and some, some animal fats in there. But shouldn't but, um, crazy no. people be able to raise their kids in a crazy way? Uh, is there a limit? Like, if you fed your kid nothing but Pop-Tarts, <laughs> might one be able to consider that child oh, abuse? I don't even think Pop-Tarts. Let's go with uh, let's go with genital mutilation. Um, Ian, are you going to – I mean, you know, this is this is the difficulty that your position has is, is that well, – What do you mean? Well, female genital mutilation is practiced in Africa uh, a great deal. Yeah, where they, I oppose those. I, I those oppose things. it. I oppose uh, vegan diets for young people. Yeah. Now, my but question. It's none of my damn business. Oh, right, that's where it comes. Do. That's where you come down on this. I'm going to say this is unacceptable, but I don't know what to do about what, it. Vegan precisely. diets or genital mutilation. I'm. I have. I'm trying to f- to draw a line. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm certain female genital mutilation is. I'm not entirely sure on veganism. Sorry, Chris. What were you saying there? Well, I think Mark was kind of on the point there where both could cause harm to the child. One is obvious, cutting off the uh, female sexual sensory organ there, and the other, not so obvious, a little more subtle, like feeding your kid McDonald's so he gets fat and has a coronary at like 12, like Mm -hmm. a good chunk of Americans are doing nowadays. Right, that's a good point. That's sort of the other side of this, right? I- irresponsible feeding of uh, you know kids with a with too much meat or you know fatty foods or whatever it is that's bad. Because I remember fat's been bad and it's been good, and so I don't know what's good. But like you know, feeding your kids abusively in some way that could be a problem. And <laughs> yeah. you know, who's being taken to court for that? Who's being taken to court for feeding their kids too much? I would uh, even hesitate to breach a subject, and I wouldn't want to give the state any ideas. But at the yeah. same time, what? what oh, the state's got ideas. A topic for discussion. I, 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 I can assure you, the state has ideas and designs on what kids should be eating and what they shouldn't be be eating, and this is a very, very slippery slope. Um, you know, the difficulty is, is that I think that humans are omnivores, right? Like, I believe that the reason we have two eyes set in front of our heads is that so that we can judge distance like predators do. The reason yep. we have pointy teeth is so that we can hold grasp neat meat like predators do. That's right. And, that you know, be cut like predators, um, like omnivores and like uh, carnivores, we have a shorter uh, uh, digestive system. And people with shorter, di- or excuse me, of creatures with shorter di- digestive systems, they need meat, hmm. at least a certain amount, in order to grow yeah, up healthy and strong. We're, we're not four stomachs chewing cud. We mm. definitely need some protein, in my opinion. And um, well, good good conversation, guys. I guess where it leads from here is how do you rectify this without involving the D, uh, the CPS taking your kids away for feeding your kids too many Happy Meals. So. Uh, Good evening, guys. Yeah, good That's question. Funny. Thanks That's for right. the call, Chris. I appreciate it. And my answer is I don't think you can. I mean, you can try to persuade, and I think that's about all you got. But if this lady's a diet in the wool vegan, she's probably not going to listen to you. Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, to, this is one of the reasons why we have two parents um, mm-hmm. is to sort of to, to mellow out the crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and that way, you know, this is an important circumstance where the kids should be able to decide well but a young person can't right like if we're talking about a three-year-old mm-hmm. you can't really decide or even younger than that i um, reading this website here where uh, it talks about vegan diets it says that soy milk 
rice milk, and other plant milks and homemade formulas should not be used to replace breast milk or commercial infant formula for the first year, acknowledging that these things are inadequate mm. when it comes to providing proper nutrition in this area. These foods do not contain the proper ratio of protein, fat, and carbohydrate, nor do they have enough of the many vitamins and minerals used as a significant part of the diet in the first year. So that, you know, this right here on the, the, the vegetarian website, talking about kids, that concerns me. All right, more uh, here in moments. Maybe you've got personal experience with this. You've got the mom who is refusing to feed her son meat, but now she's going to be forced to by a court. It certainly doesn't seem like the right way to accomplish this. 855 450 free. Free Talk Live. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888 315 9618. BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click ReadyMadeResources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project, I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp dot freetalklive.com Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can share your thoughts with us here. We're talking about veganism. Is it a danger to kids? You're raising children. Uh, should those kids be eating meat? And there's uh, one mom in Italy who's saying no. She's, in fact, feeding her son, uh, who's now 12, a very limited diet to essentially grains and maybe a few veggies and fruits every now and then, but focusing mostly on grains. Mark, you're saying that's like the opposite from what you do at your household. And so you're worried about this kid. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Not a 12-year-old. I'm not worried about a 12-year-old. No, you're not worried about him. No. Um, okay. I mean, I think that a 12-year-old should be getting more uh, protein. However, he's old enough to make whatever mistakes he wants to make. Mm -hmm. um, I was in prison with people who were 12. If the floor, if really? The, yep. If the Florida Department of Corrections can incarcerate people at the age of 12, then fine. They can choose whatever it is they want to eat. You were in it. You weren't in juvie, were you? I was in a youthful offender institution. For a period if of time. somebody okay. was uh, convicted of murder um, while at 12 years old, they would be moved to, they would be adjudicated as an adult and put in a youthful offender institution. All right, so uh, we'll get with to- With people as old as 24. <laughs> you with your thoughts, including Doug in Chicago. Doug, you're up on Free Talk Live, listening via TuneIn. Yeah, hey, um, Mark, I normally agree with you. I can't agree with on your remark that you made that, you know, a human being that we're pretty much made to eat meat. Um, when have you ever eaten chicken or beef raw? You ever eaten it raw? I've had uh, steak tartare, so <laughs> beef has been raw, yeah, but not chicken. Uh, you, but you know you know that you can get incredibly, incredibly ill off of that, right? I know that you I can mean, get salmonella from chicken, yeah. No, not only that. I mean, you can get incredibly ill off of eating any meat raw and not properly cooked all the way. Yep. If you're talking about an omnivore, uh, omnivore, which we are kind of, if you want to put a human being into that category like a wild hog, they're able to eat raw meat. They, they can do. They eat meat without cooking it. We have to cook it in order to be able to eat it even. And mm. then after you eat it, you literally have it rot in your colon. You know, you don't really have it do much benefit. Now, I'm pretty much a vegetarian. I mean, I'll eat fish. But I limit the amount of I shouldn't I shouldn't put out the term vegetarian. I mean I, I do eat meat on occasion, but I'm very limited on it. You know, when, when when we were doing hunting and gathering, you know, making a kill would be like an odd thing. It'd be like the type of thing that you'd probably only have happen a week, you know, from from the reading that I've done. You know, it wouldn't be the type of thing where they make a kill every day. And you How can they say that? I mean, they, you know, the other things I've read <laughs> say that, uh, you know, Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal man say, uh, you know, the, the largest portion of their diet was meat. I don't know. For, for, for the Neanderthal, yeah. For the Neanderthal, you're correct. And that can probably be why they're not around anymore for the fact that their entire diet. They're here. I'm 2.5% two, two Neanderthal. Uh, don't say, <laughs> I don't want to hear <laughs> your bigoted anti-Neanderthal speech. Well, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. But but they they think that that can be why that they didn't make it, for the fact that their entire diet relies entirely upon meat. Um, where, you know, we – I don't believe meat should should be a major part of our diet. You know, it should be well, grain. It should be fruit. Ian, Ian is resetting every time we come back. Now, um, you know, and I would like to point out that I've only said – mostly said – animal products. I think that young people need in their diet animal products. So I'm talking about eggs and milk, and I'm including these things that are, you know, less coercive if one is concerned with uh, the coercion of animals um, in, in these circumstances. So if you're eating, if you're, e if the way you eat is in intended for you to be healthier, I think that as one gets older, it's certainly better. But I think young people they need that protein because they're creating muscle. They're creating a body. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and you know, uh, they found a, uh, a man in a glacier a while ago. I forgot yeah. the name of the guy up in Europe. Uni? And they Uni? Were actually, they were, Uti? Yeah, no, no, it had been a different one. Okay. I, I, I watched it. I watched it. It had been on, like, Frontline or on public television, and I read about it, too. And they actually were able to go into the colon area and, and determine that, yeah, you know, he ate the majority of the diet had been, you know, grain and, and fruit and that he got it at a lower elevation. You know, clearly he climbed the mountain and, and, and went into the glacier that way. But at a lower elevation, he ate, you know, grain and that type of food. He didn't eat a lot of meat. Mm -hmm. uh, 
fun. So they couldn't warm him up and bring him back to life, huh? Bummer. Well, I didn't think that was going to happen. That's kind of interesting. Hey, you know. What a way to go. Yeah, mm. I, I, I'll bet you different people in different places had different diets, and it's we're going to argue for a very long time yeah, about we're what right, we're right ancient, back to, man, uh-huh. <laughs> ancient man ate. I, I don't want to argue about it because it sounds like you've done some uh, some research. I've certainly read some things. Um, well, I mean, what I see all is— uh, But so, chimpanzees don't get a great deal of meat in their diet. Yeah, I come into this as totally ignorant, right? Like, I see people trying all kinds of different diets. You, Doug, are saying you don't really want to eat meat. You don't see any value in it. Uh, but other people, that's all they are eating. Uh, what is it? What's it called, Mark? Where the people just eat bacon and meat like that, and like almost nothing else? I think that's a joke. Is it paleo or whatever? No. Uh, okay. No, no. They have another name for it. They have. Um, uh, I, I forgot the name for that diet. I'm not claiming that I don't eat meat. I eat fish, okay. and I'll occasionally eat meat. But I am very, very limited on the amount of meat that I will eat. And I work out. I do bodybuilding. You know, I do bike riding, and I look in great condition. But you know. Hmm. I don't eat meat all the time. Like How much other do you people. weigh? I won't do it. I weigh about two hundred five. It'll flux, you know, go go up and down. How tall are I weigh you? About um, about five nine. You're thick. Um, I mean, you know, yeah. you're a you're a sizable man. Um, now, how much? Yeah. What's your waist size? I don't even know that. I have no what idea. Kind, what, on that. what size are your pants? I couldn't even tell you. I, you don't know if you I wear size thirty two, thirty four, thirty sixes. I don't. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, I don't sweatpants know. all the time? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Thanks, Doug, for your call, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I thought that was real. I, I swear I know people in my life who are like, oh, yeah, I eat bacon and meat, and that's about it, and that they've been like, Pour, like the fat just pours off. They've been losing a ton of weight. Well, that's a different story. Um, if you're talking about intending to do weight loss, yeah. um, there's a variety of things that people can do. I'm not talking about a weight loss diet. So that's if not a joke. That's That actually is... Like, that's what people do. Yeah, there's all right. kinds of different diets out right. there for weight loss. I would not recommend a diet for weight loss for living. Right. I'm talking about a diet to live on. And Isn't the paleo thing, uh, that's not a diet for weight loss? That's... Okay, a lot of it people, seems like people are living on that, too. Yeah, a lot of people lose a lot of weight on paleo, and it's great for coming to a to an equilibrium weight that's good for you. You're probably not going to be ripped on uh, mm-hmm. a paleo diet, but you're probably going to be extraordinarily healthy. Well, you have but to a work paleo out diet, to be ripped. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it's it's still you just, just get not— get to change your diet and get ripped. It's right? not optimal for yeah. that. And uh, But a paleo diet's really, um, you know, it's it's not about that. It's really about being healthy, and it's going to be majority vegetables. It's, it's oh, going to really? be smaller portions of meat um, for, you know, uh, many what's, paleos. What's Some the of diet them just, called with the meat? I don't know the answer to that. Like I, I, see you're, I hear you're off. obsessed with this diet. I have no I idea. I think it's fascinating because on, we just had a caller who's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think you sh- people should eat meat hardly ever. And then there's these other people that are eating a bunch of meat and they're seeing just amazing weight loss. So what that tells me is that there's just, you know, people have different preferences and they different do. things work for different people. Okay, so I'm not arguing with people's preferences, right. Ian. I'm I not wouldn't saying argue. you are. I'm just trying to understand what these different diets are called and yeah. I just don't know what they are. I my, thought you might know. And instead only, you thought it was a joke. <laughs> my only concern is is um, when it comes to young people being forced to eat certain ways. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think the way my wife feeds my son is awesome. You know, sometimes I'm like, hey, he's getting a few too many of these organic cane sugar gummy bears or whatever. But, you know. We got Nick on the line. He's in Orlando. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Nick. How are you guys doing? I'd like to add to your vegan conversation. Yes, sir. I wasn't sure which one of you uh, was was cautious about the vegan diet, but That's I wanted me, to Mark. reaffirm That's Mark. that. All right. Yeah, I think I think Mark's concerns are, are really valid for a couple of different reasons. One is that we all know that everybody's body needs uh, certain vitamins, certain nutrients, and a certain amount of calories to continue to function properly. And sure. when you go to something as extreme, or what I would refer to as an extreme diet like vegan, you've got to realize that it's a science and a discipline, right? Yeah. You have to be careful, and there is a correct way to do it. But unfortunately, some people are not equipped to do it properly and that absolutely can translate into harm coming to either themselves or their children and sometimes even death stand by nick if you have more to say we we can bring it back here in a moment uh 855 450 free look i'm not saying i i don't have concerns i'm not a vegan nor am i a vegetarian i'm not interested in those things i like lots of different foods so i don't want to make it sound like i'm critical here i just feel like it's this lady's life she should be able to make whatever food she wants for her kids it's free talk live on my business 855 450 free 
The Atlas Society's Atlas Summit is just around the corner, June 18th through the 21st, right before Porkfest in Nashua, New Hampshire. Connect, grow, have fun with longtime objectivists and people just learning Ayn Rand's philosophy. There are discounts for students, locals, and one-day rates at atlassociety.org. The event is jam-packed with speakers. Come and be a part of the most important objectivist event of the year, the Atlas Summit, June 18th through the 21st, Nashua, New Hampshire, atlassociety.org. 20% off with coupon code FTL, atlassociety.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. We've all heard the news stories, another shooting, and they're getting worse. That's why Infidel Body Armor introduces Infidel Fridays, exclusive 24-hour insider deals to save you money and possibly save your life. Make it a favorite when you log on to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Then be sure to visit each and every Infidel Friday to get special insider pricing, but for 24 hours only. That's InfidelBodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM, by the way. So if you want to join us there, you may do that. It is the live Sunday edition of the program. We're talking about uh, parenting and diets, specifically a woman in Italy now being ordered by a judge to feed her son meat at least once a week. She's a vegan, 
she doesn't really want to do that. I imagine she's probably going to because she's under court order uh, at this point. But and and I don't feel like she should have to. I mean, I feel like it's her business. It's her son. She should be able to make the decision she wants about what food to feed her son. And there, of course, are other complicating factors in here. Number one, there's a divorce. So you've got the, you know, the uh, the man and the woman, they're not together anymore. And the man wants one thing and the woman wants another thing. And they both have separated kind of custody of the kids. So the kid gets a different diet when he's with dad than he does when he's with mom. And that complicates matters. And, of course, bringing the state involved in these uh, issues always brings the issue of force into play, which... Otherwise, I don't think that I don't think this woman should have force used upon her. I think that, you know, persuasion is the best way to do it. But ultimately, some people will not be persuaded. You know, they they have very firm beliefs about what is the right thing to eat. And I think other parents have firm beliefs about other things that people will find disagreeable. Right. Like we've talked in the past about uh, fundamentalist Christian parents who refuse to take their kids to the doctor, for instance. Yep. Uh, and I know, think this is on par with that. Yeah, it's right around right around there, and uh, you know they, their viewpoint is that well, if he if his sight was meant to be good, then Jesus would cure him, you know that kind of thing. So we don't need to go to the eye doctor and get them glasses. Ah, what's that? You've come down with some malady. Well, if it's in God's will, then you'll survive it. So we don't need to go to the hospital. Uh, Not need to. It would be um it it would be. Uh, irreligious to go to the hospital. Well, it I mean, would be against their religion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, look, are, are you kidding? You'd mess around with what God's will is? If it, God's, if it is God's will, he will, he will take care of it. So I don't take any side on, you know, what is or is not the right diet. I, you know, my viewpoint on this is this lady should be allowed to cook what she wants. This, the boy in this case is old enough to decide whether or not, I think he should be deciding whether or not he wants to stay at his mom's house or he wants to stay at his dad's house. Like, if he doesn't like what mom's cooking, then he should say, all right, dad, I'd rather live with you. Well, further, but, I think that he should be afforded a certain amount of uh, room in the refrigerator or be given his own refrigerator mm -hmm. where he can keep uh, things like, you know, meat if that's what he wishes to eat. And he can prepare that on his own. He's 12 years old. So I think that in many cases, much of this is about nothing. It just, for me, it brought up the opportunity to talk about you know, veganism, vegans raising children. and Which I, you have concerns with. I do. I, I have diet. all kinds of concerns with all kinds of people raising their kids. Yeah. Um, I think we can look into the past. Uh, for instance, the Castrati. Do you know who these folks are? Uh, are they related to the Parmigiani Warriors? <laughs> yeah, I love that story. I got that past you <laughs> so long ago. They, no, the Castrati were a real okay. folks. The Parmigiani and Parmigiani's were a joke that I told you while we were eating spaghetti one time. Yeah. Um, no, the uh, the Castrati were these uh, these young men in Italy who had their testicles removed at a young age so that their voices didn't age. Um, now they would be, you know, they wouldn't do this to every young boy. They'd do it the ones with the really great voices. And so, you know, they've. this is something that obviously the parents would be willing to do, but you'd never allow somebody to do that today. Um, I brought up female genital mutilation. I think, frankly, that male genital mutilation uh, should be on this on par with this. The binding They're both of, bad. They're both bad. The right. binding of feet. Uh, you know, the Japanese used to have this custom of sort of tying the feet up in a way that, you know, made them sort of scrunch together and stuff. And there's all kinds of different uh, mutilations that people have done uh, to themselves and their children throughout human history. Now, I don't know whether to con to, to put uh, veganism in this category, but uh, for me, it's close. It's right on the edge. Jim is with us in Des Moines. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Jim. Great. Go ahead. Yeah. Um... Ian, I kind of agree with you, what you're saying, because basically freedom freedom means only one thing, and that's freedom from the coercive power of the state. But at the same time, the state's really only proper function is to protect individual and property rights. So Mark, uh, the, the point he's making, a child is still an individual, and the state mm -hmm. is within its rights to make sure that the child is getting a proper diet. Uh, I disagree. The state have doesn't have rights. Only individuals have rights. No, I said the state's only proper function is to protect individual and property rights. That's the state's only proper function, that and national defense. Oh. And a child is an individual. So the state, you know, the state can intervene, like you talked about the 
the child who is not getting medical treatment for religious reasons, the state can intervene. See, I think that's a huge problem. I mean, I think you're talking about a Pandora's box. You're opening up a, a very slippery slope here when you say that it's the state's proper role to come in and intervene when the state bureaucrats think that the kid's being raised the wrong way. I mean, we've seen that has led to some really scary well, situations where parents have had their kids well, taken it, from them. It is it is a slippery slope. The court has to have some objective means, usually through an, an expert, a dietitian, or something that's going to come in. You might have a parent that's a fruitarian or a breatharian or something like this <laughs> and, and says, I'm... I'm only going to feed my child fruit, or he's just going to live on air. I mean, a child, the law of identity says that a child needs particular, you know, it, it yeah. has certain needs as a child. Um, yeah, but the problem you know, is, that, look, I understand that there are going to be a lot of people listening to what you're saying and saying, yeah, yeah, he's right about that. We need the state to do this. Well, look, I mean, I don't think we need to have the state at all. So people if, are going to intervene in other well, right. people's parenting, if you, whether it's the state or not. That's what I was going to say, is if you feel like some kids are being abused, then you should take it within your own uh, hands to kidnap those kids and save them from the abuse of parents. Like, you know, if you know uh, parents are beating their children— there's some good reasons to take some kids away from some bad parents. And I really, the, the well, ultimate question is, what do you think society will accept as far as kidnapping kids from bad parents? Because that's not what, what I don't want to see happen is some government bureaucrat who, you know, just arbitrarily makes decisions about what is and what is not the right way to raise kids. And then we have what we have today where you can get in trouble for all kinds of stuff as a parent that is well, relatively well, innocuous. That's why I say that it's it can't be arbitrary. There must but it be always is with the government. And- They'll arbitrarily pick the expert that they're going to because, there's, as we pointed out already tonight, different experts are going to say different things about different subjects. So, you know, one bureaucrat, whatever bureaucrat's in charge of the CPS program or whatever it is you're talking about here, they're going to select the expert that most best backs up their viewpoint that they already have. I mean, we've, we've so, had so many different stories in here about government stealing people's kids from them that absolutely didn't deserve it. And that's the Pandora's box that you're opening up here by saying that the government should be able to do that. Well, I'd say that if I was, if, if anybody, whether it's the government or not, decides to take people's kids, they should be responsible individually. Each individual should be legally responsible for their actions. And that's going to be the biggest solution well, to this problem. Well, when the state exists, that won't happen. Well, the state never, never causes its actors to be legally responsible. Well, yeah. that's the system that we have to work with at this time. Uh, you know, if, if somebody's abusing their child, you can't resort to vigilanteism and go in there and, and uh, you know, kidnap the child. Although Why that not? That's what you're asking the state to do. Well, the state has the legal authority. Yeah, I mean, and they also are completely uh, unliable for anything they do. When they steal people's children, they have no liability for what happens when they're in their care and their custody or, you know, for what the fact that they've stolen them in the first place and caused I, all I kinds agree. of damage. I agree. I agree. Uh, but there's a saying, we can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Well, that's either. the thing. See, but I'd rather get rid of the state and take take my chances with whatever bad parents are out there and then trust the neighbors and trust, you know, other family members or whoever to step in when some sort of abuse is uncovered. I don't think we need to have the auspices of the state to try to protect people. But, Jim, thanks for your call and thoughts, man. I do appreciate it. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Steve is in St. Louis. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Steve. Yes, hello. Hey there. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty heavy stuff there. Um, I, I would like to lighten it up a little bit. Sure. Um, just to go, to go back to what you were talking about earlier, you guys were talking about the diet where – you eat nothing but bacon and ham and, you know, all kinds of meat and fats and animal fats. Well, that's, that's the Atkins diet. Okay, I and thought there was a is. new name for it. I thought there was some sort of tweak they made to it, but I don't know. Yeah, the Atkins uh, salads are just fine on Atkins. I ate lots of salads sure. on Atkins. Well, yeah, as long as there's no carbs involved. Right. Like, you, yeah. The croutons. Just, Hold the croutons, please. The carbs, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just cut the carbs out, and then after a while, you lose some weight, and then you slowly add them back in. Steve, if you and, had more, yeah, you're welcome work. to stand by. Otherwise, thanks for the call. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. We have an entire hour remaining, hour number three on the way. Of course, you can bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. We could also talk about an interesting jail in Norway. It's Free Talk Live. 
Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My Magic Mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, May 31st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.76 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,191 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $234. Antiwar.com reports the USA Freedom Act, an extremely watered-down reform bill, which some argue actually expands NSA surveillance capabilities, is coming up for a hugely important and likely very close vote on Sunday with the future of the USA Patriot Act Section 215, which the bill renews in the balance. Section 215 expires on Monday, and the USA Freedom Act requires 60 votes to pass procedural hurdles. Last weekend, the Senate managed only 57 votes in favor, but some officials say they can come up with the three additional votes to ensure its passage without debate on the amendments. Senator Rand Paul has vowed a filibuster in an effort to prevent the extension from going through on Sunday, saying he was determined to force the expiration of the NSA illegal spy program. Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn had previously expressed confidence that Paul would give in, saying he was a constructive guy. This weekend, he's condemning him, however, along with others who are surprised that his efforts to forestall extension were more than just a one-off grandstanding effort going into the recess. With the filibuster, Senator Paul can likely make things extremely difficult for the Republican leadership, but even if they do manage to force a vote on Sunday, there is no guarantee those three extra votes will be there. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley announced his 2016 presidential bid Saturday morning, mounting a campaign against presumptive favorite Democrat Hillary Clinton for the party's nomination. Announcing his bid in Baltimore, the city where he got his political start, O'Malley called on a new generation of leadership to rebuild the American dream. The former twice-elected Baltimore mayor focused on the American dream, racial tensions, and climate change, laying out his plans for his campaign. He said, we saved our country before and we will save 
save our country now. We will do that by rebuilding the dream. Speaking at Federal Hill Park, O'Malley stressed income equality, the need to rebuild the country, and focused on the role Wall Street executives played in the 2008 financial crisis, saying, Tell me how it is in this country you can get pulled over if you have a broken taillight, but if you wreck the country, you are absolutely untouchable. O'Malley has seated himself firmly to the left of Clinton, opposing the Keystone XL pipeline and a pending Pacific Rim trade agreement and favoring expanding Social Security benefits. O'Malley is the third candidate to form announce a bid for the 2016 Democratic nomination, joining Hillary Clinton and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Other considering a bid include Vice President Joe Biden, former Virginia Senator Jim Webb, and former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports rain caused flooding on roads in part of Texas on Saturday after severe weather killed at least 24 people during the week and prompted President Barack Obama to declare a disaster in the state. Texas has endured record rainfall in May. This week, flooding turned streets into rivers, ripped homes off foundations, swept over thousands of vehicles, and trapped people in cars and houses. Obama signed a disaster declaration late Friday to free up federal funds to help rebuild areas of Texas slammed by the storms. No estimate has been given for the total damage done in Texas. The Hayes County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that the bodies of two women were recovered on Saturday from the Blanco River. That raised the death toll from the flooding to at least 24. Flash flood warnings were in place in several counties in North Texas, including Dallas County. The National Weather Service forecasts scattered thunderstorms along a cold front stretching from Texas to the northeast United States. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Publicists everywhere agreed this week that the nation's celebrities are in dire need of more fame, stressing that all six billion of the world's populace should know every U.S. celebrity by name and face by now. Publicists are calling for an emergency influx of buzz, heat, press, and word of mouth to be administered to the nation's celebrities immediately in order to prevent crucial fame levels from becoming dangerously low. Novelist Edward Milligan told reporters this week that in his new book, By the Water's Edge, he has fleshed out in meticulous detail his own huge and stunningly shitty world. Using in-depth research and the power of his own imagination, Milligan was able to conjure out of thin air every hackneyed character, trite street name, and horse backstory in the fictional town of Connors Cove. The complete f***ing hack proudly said he has created a universe that readers will feel they can actually reach out and touch. Sources say the prolific writer has not yet been punched repeatedly in the face. In other news, McDonald's opens a new senior citizen play place. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition of the program. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. We've got a website. You can go to freetalklive.com. Do enjoy the features that you'll find waiting for you there over at freetalklive.com. They're free. Unlike a lot of those talk show hosts in the business, they want to charge you for their sites. Ours is free, so go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. You may also dial in and bring up anything that you like. We have discussed quite a bit about veganism versus you know other diets, uh, parental rights. it has been a variety of different threads uh, that stemmed from a story of a woman who has been ordered by a court in Italy to feed her son meat at least once per week because she's on an extreme vegan diet and she's put her son on that diet as well. I feel like we've exhausted that topic, at least between you and I, Mark, but you are still welcome to call in if you have something to say about that. Always open phones anytime here on Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You may also call in on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Here's a story from NPR about an unusual prison, uh, a prison that does things a lot differently than you might find done here in the United States. And trying new things is a good idea when it comes to prisons because the ones we have, uh, they're not working so well at actually helping people. Yeah, if you um, expect to get different results, you're going to have to try different things. 
And government you, doesn't like that very if much. If you like the results uh, that, that are going on here in the United States with the largest prison population on the planet by a good margin, um, you know, larger than any country, even ones that are far more populous than the United States, well, you know, if those are the results you want to have where you have this giant government program of a prison industrial complex, then by all means, let's try nothing new. Let's think about nothing new. Well, that's certainly the way they like things here. I mean, the status quo is very good for the prison building industry whoever it is that's building those prisons. And it's certainly good for hiring more bureaucrats within the prison guard world. So, you know, there's certain groups of people that benefit from that. But the poor bastards that are sitting in those cells, many of whom have never harmed another human being in their entire lives, uh, it's certainly not good for them. So here's a story from NPR. The first thing you notice when you enter the grounds of Halden Prison in Norway's far southeast is the forest. Pine and birch trees surround buildings of dark black brick with elegant windows. No one should have to live among conifers. There's no concrete exercise yard here. It looks like a university campus. Air, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering this man's name. It's spelled A-R-E. Could it possibly be pronounced something besides R? Are? I don't know. Let's go with R. Let's go with R. R. Heudel, the prison governor, smiles at the incredulous reaction of visitors. The effect of the prison design was intentional. He said, the only thing that looked like a prison is the big wall. You think this is a prison when you see the big wall, but the buildings could be a university, hospital, school, something like that, he says. A 25-foot high concrete wall encircles the compound, but nothing else speaks of a maximum security prison. No I don't know why they have a 25-foot concrete wall when, um, I mean, you know, prisons all over the United States make do with two 12-foot uh, fences run about... Mm, 20 feet apart from each other uh, with uh, con concerted wire in between. I mean, why would you block out the sun? Well, um, and spend all that extra money. I get this. I get the uh, intention. Or the, I get the impression here that this is a large campus. So there's no sun being blocked out. The walls are a good distance away from the actual okay. prison facility, at least based on the photo that. Then why I'm would you spend all that extra money? I don't know. It's Norway, Mark. Anyway, going on here. No guard towers, no guns. No razor wire. None of the trappings of what you might normally consider. A so maybe they just security. didn't want the razor wire because it looks, I mean, it, it looks scary. Yeah. We have a lot of drug smugglers. It's near the border with Sweden. We have murderers, rapists. We have everything in this prison, says the warden. They have done bad things, Hoydel says, but they are not bad people. He says that's a really important distinction. They are human beings. We treat them with respect. And that's the philosophy behind this prison, which opened in 2010. Norway, which is rich with North Sea oil, spends $90,000 a year to house each prisoner. That's three times what is spent on inmates in the United States. Yeah, that's a lot of money per year. Norwegians think but it's But also, they probably have fewer, so maybe that, eh, well, I don't know. Maybe it's an issue of uh, si you know, economy of size. The uh, Norwegians think it's a good investment, says the story. The recidivism rate is less than 30%, which is half of what it is in the United States. 60% is the claim of the recidivism rate in the United That's States? That's what they're saying here. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, these very difficult parole and probation um, uh, criteria. And it's easy to violate probation. Yeah, it's yeah. very easy to go back in that way. I didn't, and I was never going to. And there are more than 2.2 million Americans in prison. Norway's prison population is one-tenth that on a per capita basis. So per capita, theirs is one-tenth of the United States. Their prison population. Their prison population. Yeah. So a lot fewer, few, many, many fewer. Uh, we walk up a meandering landscape path, passing prisoners on the way. They greet the prison governor by his first name. The atmosphere at Halden is casual, but the doors are locked and cameras watch every movement. Past a grove of birch trees, we approach a series of elegant wood and metal-clad buildings. These are the cell blocks. The 250 inmates here are locked in their cells for 12 hours a day, but those cells are private rooms with wood furniture, a shower, a fridge, and a flat-screen television. Hmm. I've always been wondered about this is there's all kinds of problems with keeping inmates. Um, it, it's difficult work, and... If they just give them TV, I know everybody hates the idea of inmates having cable television. But they're criminals. Right. It's bad. Let's treat the, Let's take all the bad people, put them in a bad place, <laughs> treat them really badly, <laughs> then let them go, and then be really shocked when they don't act <laughs> <Right>. good. Um, <laughs> okay. So, but from a standpoint 
you know, like, we might really be able to do something awesome if you put a bunch of educational television on. Just saying, um, you know, why? what's the problem with this thing running? Does it, you know, I mean, you know what it's like having a TV on. Your, your eyes are drawn to it. You're mesmerized. Mesmerized inmates aren't picking up objects and smacking people in the head with them. It's true. Um, you know, <laughs> so... I even had a prison guard one time suggest that uh, that he what he thought was is that everybody should get an ounce of pot a week, and I'd ask you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, maybe be we would have off. yeah maybe maybe the prison population would be better off with an ounce of pot a week and uh, some flat screen TVs. Maybe this would be better for everybody. Maybe it would save money. Maybe recidivism rates would be lower. We have no idea. So there's actually a photo in this article of one of the cells and. <laughs> I mean, this looks like you're in Fort Galt. <laughs> it, looks, it looks pretty nice, all things considered. There's like a, what appears to be a fairly large window, like not quite full size, but not small like you would normally see in a, on a prison. Um, and then there's also uh, what appears to be like a, you know, kind of a twin, maybe slightly smaller than twin size bed. It looks like a dorm room. Yeah, very much like a dorm room. Or a there's hospital a, room. A desk with a chair. and It's still some, institutional. Oh, definitely. It's just some shelving and the television there. Uh, but, I mean, Mark, I've been in a jail before, and my uh, circumstances of being kept were not as nice as this. And the jail I went to is the one here in Cheshire County, which we call the Keene Spiritual Retreat. Uh, I mean, here you don't even have a, a celly. There's no there's no roommate in this cell. And that's a nice thing, too, to not that's have to really share really nice. space. What I, what I look at it, and the first thing I saw was a mattress that is a sort of a full twin mattress as opposed to this you know pad thing that on a metal slab that I had to sleep on in prison. Um, I wouldn't call it a full twin mattress. It looks pretty thin. That looks pretty. That looks pretty prison thin uh, to me. That mattress. There's there's like a mattress with like a sort of a pillow mat on top of it. You're, there are actually two things there in that bed. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks a hell of a lot more comfortable it's than stuff I looks, slept. Yeah, it definitely on. looks better than uh, than what I slept on as well. But it's not just the architecture that makes Halden unique. Look, I don't particularly like convicts. Um, I'm not looking to make the world their world easier. Uh, that's not my goal. If I thought that uh, you know dispensing daily beatings to inmates would somehow be a uh, you know a preferable way to run a prison that would have good results, I would pr- I'm a, I'm a very nuts and bolts practical kind of guy. I'd say the beating shall commence until morale <laughs> improves. Well, but we're talking about results here, right? And- right. That's what so that's what I want people to 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 look at here is is that Okay, you you got to consider we've tried the let's treat people badly thing. I would love somebody to call at 1-855-450-3733 and suggest some new worst thing that we could do to inmates <laughs> that we haven't done in the last few decades in the United States. Because I think that, you know, other than things that are sort of constitutionally prohibited, you know, just about every horrifying thing that could be tried on people has been done. And... I, like, is Sheriff Joe Arpaio getting better results no. in his jail no, he's by just putting people in, cells. by putting people in pink underwear and putting them out in the sun? No, absolutely not. There's more on the way here about this prison, some unique things about it. Coming up here, 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts with us. What do you think about this? Is this too uh, wimpy? 855 450 free. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. 
With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-5012. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the radio waves. This live Sunday edition continues. We're talking about prison and conditions in which inmates are being kept. And how doing things differently might give you different results when it comes to recidivism rates. The uh, likelihood of somebody to uh, recommit a crime, a violent crime, presumably, when they get out of prison. Uh, The statistics here, according to NPR.org in Norway, they're saying that the recidivism rate is less than 30% there as compared to something like 60% in the United States. And we're looking at one of the prisons in Norway. They're not all like this. There are more conventional prisons in Norway. And in fact, if prisoners are not doing what they're supposed to, if they're not following the rules and attending classes and counseling at this prison we're talking about, this sort of unique prison, they are then sent to conventional prisons. So it's not to say that the entire system is like this in Norway but obviously there are some differences. Yeah, I think this this is really important. Um, having spent eight and a half years in prison for uh, second-degree murder, I never killed anybody, but and I was finally released by a, an order from the, the Florida Supreme Court, um, uh, or as a result of that. The But the issue, you know, like having seen this on the inside, is, is that in many ways, inmates can get it only so good. Right. Like, you know, there's only like people operate best when they have new different goals going on. Like there's new ways to get more freedoms. What I think that and, and, you know, the limiting that we have in the United States around prisons is, is that, you know, you can remain disciplinary report free. That's what they called uh, sort of write ups. uh, The prison I was at as a DR. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, you know, I never had a DR, but there are people that, um, yeah, never. Well, okay, I never had one stick. I got one. (laughs) I did get one for. You beat it? 
altering and defacing state property. Mm. I was found guilty at the hearing, but found innocent upon appeal wow. because um, the lieutenant who investigated could read English. Um, and you know, it was obvious I didn't alter or deface state property. I possessed a pair of pants that had been altered in the. Uh, um, you know, the, the sewing room, but that doesn't prove that I altered them Yep. because I didn't. Uh, they were given to me by a guy who went home. Um, nonetheless, uh, I probably, in, in retrospect, I wish I'd never touched those pants. Yep. But, um, you know, you, you get kind of obsessed with uh, having new and different things there. The, the, and this is kind of the point is, is that, you know, if inmates could have more freedoms as they performed better, hmm. this might prepare them for a world where they would have even more freedoms. Yeah, this, this doesn't seem like yeah. a radical concept. No, that's a right? good point, too, because a lot of them, when they get out, even if they don't want to commit a crime, they're so used to being in prison, they're institutionalized, it's the only place they're comfortable. And so they find themselves committing acts of crime in order to, believe it or not, get put back in the place that they know, the place they understand, which is prison. Yeah, well, it's crazy, but it's true. I, I never... <laughs> Yeah, I never saw anybody beating on the doors to stay in or to come back. But at the same time, um, I have heard people say that that's what they would do if they were released. These are lifers that had been in longer than I. Um, so, you know, I don't know. There was a guy that, I mean, it, I was just in jail, which is different from prison. It's for people who are there less than a year. I mean, I was just in jail, and one of the dudes who came in while I was there in the cell block comes back in after having been arrested again for something. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't there when I was th in the beginning of my stay, but he'd been in that jail previously, right? Yep. Okay. And so he comes in and he goes, "Lucy, I'm home." <laughs> you know, it's just out of this attitude of, "Hey, I'm back." You know, yep. like here I am, home this, away from home. This is where I belong. Uh, anyway, going on here with this prison in Norway. So it's not just the architecture that makes Halden unique. You'll find the staff playing badminton with inmates in the gym, <laughs> eating with them in the dining areas. That's That didn't happen when I was in jail. No, the, the place where people eat often is uh, distinguishes hierarchies, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, there was absolutely a staff dining hall. Um, I worked Yep, and the it. staff got different food sometimes, too, than the inmates. Yep. Karen Dwyer Loken is from Baltimore. She's married to a Norwegian and teaches history and English to inmates at Halden. She says, it's based on mutual respect between everybody. It's that anybody can learn anything. Anybody can change their lives with the right kind of help, guidance, and giving them a chance. Remember, and they this, said they're murderers in this prison. Yeah, and this teaching history thing, I think, is uh, also something, is, is that there was basically no college-level educational opportunities. One of the reasons that I took a plea bargain in my case and didn't fight it was uh, you know, there were several reasons. One of them was that uh, I could go to prison and begin getting gain time, whereas I was doing day for day in jail. I would have been doing something like 10 days for one um, in prison. Well, they took that gain time away shortly after I got there. Mm. But, you know, regardless, that was one of the reasons. Another reason was um, I thought that I would uh, go take some I go, just go get my college for free while I'm in there. Turns out they have no college in there. I didn't know that when I took my plea bargain. <laughs> I also thought I'd grow my hair out. Whoop, they have mandatory butch haircuts. <laughs> so none of that really worked out for me. Uh, she says they're not supposed to be punished. They're supposed to serve time. She continues, their punishment is being locked up. Their punishment is not to be treated badly while they're locked up. The philosophy is in stark contrast to prisons in the U.S., According to NPR, Dwyer Loken says she's talked to people who work in prisons in Georgia and Texas, and they don't think it would work where they are. No, she our says, inmates are just too bad. Yeah. She says it's too ingrown, the idea that a person who has done something bad is supposed to be punished for a very long time. And while that is, not, um, th that is not what prisons are supposed to do. The terminology is custody, care, and control. That's what they are supposed to do. Punishment is not part of their mandate. While he's being punished, he's supposed to be punished in as many ways as possible, she says. If inmates at Halden don't follow the rules and attend class and counseling, they are shipped to more conventional prisons. In the metal shop, Sebastian, an inmate serving time for murder... There's a metal shop. <laughs> ...is learning how to weld. The correction service won't allow the use of prisoners' full names for privacy reasons. In the U.S., many prisoners serving time for a similar crime would be locked up for 23 hours a day. But what's the first thing they do when they get out, Sebastian asks. He says they'll attack someone because they're so angry. If they lock me up 23 hours a day, if an officer comes open my door, I'll kick his butt. Because why should I not? I'm locked up for 23 hours a day anyway. But they treat me with respect. They give me opportunities and trust. And I want to show that I'm worthy. 
Alden focuses. Well, I don't know if this guy knows what he would do if he was uh, put in, um, you know, 23 hour seg. And I'm certain that the people that put inmates in, um, you know, segregation for 23 hours a day know exactly how to handle inmates when they open the door. But I would absolutely agree that it's insane to think that you're going to look, take somebody, put them in, um, you know, a cell 23 hours a day for 10 years and then throw them back out on the streets, and suddenly they're going to, you know, they're going to be able to behave properly. Well, Mark, it's not to say that uh, putting them in uh, segregation and then going to take them out is going to, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that it's not, I'm not saying that the staff, or he's not saying that the staff wouldn't be trained to deal with him, right? Like, they're more than prepared to deal with you. They've got the tools yes. that they need to. They're excellent at this. But he's just talking about what his attitude would be. And the attitude- I don't know if he necessarily knows what his attitude would be. I really don't trust people to know what their own psychology is. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, I don't think what he's saying is unreasonable here. I mean, if you no, are I don't. if you are on lockdown 23 hours a day and you're in for dozens of years, then why would you care? Well, why I would do- you care? Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, the point I'm trying to make here is is that I don't think he knows his own psychology, and I don't think prison guards in Texas know his psychology either. I don't think any for I think very few people who are trained in psychology have any business talking about what people's psychology would be like. I don't think- and. Anybody else really doesn't have any business at all anyway. I, I see where you're coming from, but it's not going out on a limb to say you will behave differently when given different incentives. That's true. 855-450 free. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. By now, you know that wireless technology like cell phones do, in fact, pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality, American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Talk Live. The result from the drug use, you cannot compare to caffeine or cigarettes. That's an immature... Right. It's, uh, no, the result of the war on drugs, I can't com- compare. The illegal use of drugs. Why don't we execute sellers? <laughs> Why don't we execute cigarette smokers? Will, if then, we will no longer have to worry about... People using drugs. Well, right. There are more than 100,000 people convicted of drugs every year. Do you want to execute all them, too? Them? Okay. Wow. Look, yeah, look, look how much money we'd save. 30000 a year times 100000 Okay? You know, if we took the Singapore or the, or the uh, Middle East um, model... Then we'd have a, a have state like problem. Singapore or the Middle, Middle East. East. president, maybe he can do that. Because Singapore and the Middle East have no drugs whatsoever in their countries, right? We talk live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 
Hey, who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this hospital. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, you ain't gonna make. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from? Because you're scared of the property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's victimless crime spree. Watch it for free and order the director's cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here. Join us on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting there for you. One of the things we do on Free Talk Live is talk about Bitcoin off and on. It's a really exciting alternative currency that is taking the world by storm. You could, I think, argue that Bitcoin is the world's most popular alternative to government currencies because it is accepted internationally by people all around the world. And If the, you excluded barter. And the influence continues. I don't think you can call barter a currency, really. Yeah. Uh, it, the influence continues uh, to grow with Bitcoin, with larger companies like Dell Computers taking Bitcoin, and even small mom and pop shops accepting Bitcoin. Our activists run 101 Deals, a thrift store here in town. Uh, they accept Bitcoin for thrift store purchases. So Happily. A, yeah, there's a huge range of the type of stuff that you can buy and do. Uh, and support with Bitcoin. Wikipedia taking Bitcoin. So, but you got to have Bitcoin in order to give some away or to buy things with it. So, where do you get Bitcoin? Well, one option, and I would say it's the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, is ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and most importantly, inexpensive because there are ways to pay a lot more to get Bitcoin out there. I think you're going to have a tough time finding anybody that offers a better deal than ExpressCoin.com. How about zero? transfer fee because normally when you change one form of currency into another there's a fee that's charged well expresscoin will do zero fees when you use coupon code ftl at expresscoin.com that's ftl like free talk live whether you're in the u.s or canada just start off at expresscoin.com you can get your cryptocurrency with money order or a check and you can even get other stuff like litecoin and dogecoin over there uh, but again, expresscoin.com, they've got an app that you can download, or you can just use their website, expresscoin.com. And don't forget coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all at expresscoin.com with coupon code FTL. So we were talking, uh, I don't know if it was earlier this week, I think it was, about the uh, the status of the American newspaper. And I'm just, I find this just to be absolutely fascinating and sort of a study of uh, the old guard going away and being displaced by the you know sort of disruptive technology that we have known as the internet that is allowing people to bypass the old gatekeepers and old old media the old guard if you will these are the gatekeepers these traditionally were the people that kept you from getting to an audience, right? Like you could write a letter to the editor, but maybe they wouldn't publish it. The, right, the editor, you know? <laughs> it's a letter to the editor and he decides yeah. what to do with it. Uh, but, you know, they, th that's sort of the classic definition of a gatekeeper, somebody who has access to uh, some sort of a platform and is keeping you out. And you have to jump through a certain number of hoops in order to get onto that platform. Now with the internet, anybody who has a moment in time can go and set up a free website somewhere, a free blog site on uh, WordPress, for instance, and within moments, have yourself a place for people to go on the internet. Now, driving traffic to those places is, of course, the challenge of new media, right? To drive traffic to your new media as opposed to people going to traditional media, which is, of course, their habit. That's what they're used to. People, um, especially older folks, do have the habit still of picking up a newspaper, that's starting to change, and it's changing in a big way. Now, earlier we talked about the Pew study that's going to be re, um, it's going to be cited here in this, but they get a, they dig a little bit deeper in the story here from Yahoo News. Actually, it's the AFP's Rob Lever that is reporting. 
The news remains mostly bleak for the American newspaper industry, struggling over the past decade to adapt to the new digital landscape. The sale of the San Diego Union Tribune in early May for $85 million underscored the horrific slump in the value of old media companies in recent years. And we've seen radio companies going down in price as well. Uh, so it's affecting our business, too. Although the sum paid by Tribune Publishing was only marginally below the $110 million in 2011 uh, in a sale of the San Diego Group and excluded some valuable real estate, the newspaper was believed to be worth as much as $1 billion as late as 2004. So in one decade's time, it went from what was presumed to be a $1 billion valuation to $85 million at sale this year. Wow. The story is the same at other once-proud U.S. metropolitan dailies. According to the Pew Research Center, valuations are down by more than 90% from their peaks at the Boston Globe, Philly Inquirer, Chicago Sun-Times, and Minneapolis Star Tribune. While newspapers are trying to get readers with digital subscriptions and mobile apps, they're swimming against a powerful tide. They sure are. For the U.S. Daily News. I mean, you've got to ask somebody, you know, what what does somebody want to pay for it for when when they can get most of their news? You can get 90% of your news for free online. You don't need some kind of, uh, you know, need some kind of subscription. So in the case of local news, I can see, okay, well, you know. Got to have, uh, got to pay for it in order to get it. But in a lot of times, people figure out ways to get around it, or they just live without the local news. They'll either get their news from the radio, or get their news from the the TV, or get their news from someplace else. Really, what you're doing is just keeping traffic away from your website in many ways, for the and away from your advertisers as a result. Well, of this that. is, uh, you know, before before too long, I'm going to give my prescription on how I think I can right, hold I, off I can that. save the uh, the, the <laughs> newspaper industry. Uh, we'll get in, we'll get into that here in a moment. But uh, while they're they're again swimming against this powerful tide, so for the U.S. daily newspaper sector over the past decade, weekday circulation has fallen 17 percent and ad revenue more than 50 percent, according to Pew. And in 2014, three big media companies decided to spin off newspapers to focus on more profitable broadcast or digital properties. Quote: Every newspaper chain talks about getting digital faster. The plain truth is. That despite almost two decades of effort, most aren't close to where they need to be, and they don't really know how. That's exactly right because they're old. They're, you know, they're old tech. They, they. Don't, it's hard for these old big Goliath behemoth biz businesses to change their models. Even if they do change their models, um, I mean, you're you're asking a lot. How many companies, a news, digital news companies out there, make the kind of money that it takes a newspaper to survive? How much of that pie is out there? Like, I think when it came to the news pie, it shrank. Now, I don't, yeah. I, the, the world needs to figure out, and we haven't, and consumers aren't the right ones to be asking on this. The world needs to figure out how do we support real journalism, people who write news stories. And we don't have a lot of good answers for that. Um, but... Uh, you know, there's the there's these uh, sites where people they basically the writers get paid for the amount of people that look at the the site, mm -hmm. but that's not that doesn't really incentivize good news. Is it incentivizes the top ten ways to grow your <laughs> bust? Ken Doctors, the guy who said that earlier, an industry analyst who writes with the Newsonomics blog and is a consultant for the research firm Outsell, soon said Dr. Newspapers will have few options aside from cutting the frequency of the print edition, as several dailies have done, yep. to save expenses. Well, the one in New Orleans did that. That's right. They cut to three times a week, I think. Doctor said the industry has... When you look at a lot of these dailies that are coming out, they're paper thin. My oh, wife yeah. got the uh, the newspaper all last year. My mother definitely wants to get it when she comes up and stays. Um, but my wife decided... The local paper. Yeah, the local paper. She decided, eh, you know, I just don't need it. I don't get the coupons out of there quite enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for whatever reason, she decided she didn't want to do it. It's not for me ba not badgering her. I like her to get it. That way I can go online and I don't have to worry about, uh, you know not ha getting around their their paywall but um you know she just didn't want to do it i feel bad for the local newspaper i want it to succeed but i think it needs a different business model doctor said the industry has failed to increase revenue since 2008 making it harder to invest in digital in the first quarter of 2015 seven of the largest newspaper groups made a combined profit of 21 million dollars in well, that's very bad. In 2005, the large Gannett Group alone earned $1.8 billion. 
So just a quick recap there. 2015, the first quarter, seven of the largest groups made $21 million combined in profit. And then a decade ago, just one group, Gannett Group, which is a large group, alone earned $1.8 billion. It's an incredible, incredible drop in revenue. Yeah. Uh, and they're saying here that there hasn't been a single increase in revenue since 2008. These companies, he says, have little to invest. We'll talk more about the state of the news here in moments. 855 450 freeze our number, and you can share your thoughts. Maybe you work in the newspaper business, or maybe you just got fired. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain in this live Sunday edition. More on the way. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click ReadyMadeResources.com. ReadyMade made resources we don't just sell the products we live it who did you let down today your wife your kids well how about yourself take a look in the mirror if you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet somebody else call the addiction specialist now at the detox and treatment helpline 24 hours a day seven days a week if you have private insurance we specialize in finding you the right treatment when you call right now you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. And still enough time for you if you want to share with us whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the difficulties facing the newspaper industry, and it's not getting easier for them. There's so much competition now. I mean, you know, the old days, it used to be easy. You were the only paper in a geographic area, and that was it. You know, maybe there was a competitor in your area if you were big enough, but generally... Most of them it was just them. The government actually had has rules on uh, you know what you've got to post in the newspaper of record in That's order true. to uh, you know claim a fictitious name and a variety of other things. So that you know here you have now these laws that require people to post uh, you know in newsprint <laughs> and it's going away and no one reads it. <laughs> right. So uh, you know of course the old days you you pretty much had no competition. And the history of being in the newsprint business has sort of seen an increase in competition over time, right? Because as uh, mail delivery became possible, then different papers could come in from different areas. So to some extent, that increased the level of competition on a paper, which is a good thing. To have competition means that you got to be on the top of your game. you got to be at the best uh, level of reporting and the best price and, you know, put the best value out for your customers. Uh, so then, of course, you know, you bring in television, or first you bring in radio, and then you bring in television later, and that's even more competition for these papers. And then, of course, the internet, which truly, really did break down all the barriers, uh, breaking down the, uh, you know, the prohibitions on being able to communicate with people. And now, of course, anyone can have a blog. And in fact, anyone can print their own paper if they've got enough money uh, to do so. The costs of creating media have come down dramatically. Our very own Daryl W. Perry, who is our Friday night co-host here on Free Talk Live, he prints his own four-page monthly paper here in the Keene area and distributes it all around New Hampshire. People could always do that. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, we looked at uh, putting together a little newspaper yep. that we distribute in the community or whatever. The idea was to make this sort of underground newspaper paper for people of a certain demographic. Right. And and yeah, you could always do that. That's the difference between a blog and a and you know like one of these mega blogs like Boing Boing or Huffington Post or whatever. So I mean there's a there's a you know it's just a, it's a difference in size. Well, but it's still more available now than ever before. There's more ways to print. There's more more tools that you can use to put together a newspaper. You know, in the same way that in the video production business, video the costs of producing videos yeah. have dropped dramatically. The cost of storing videos dropped dramatically. I don't think print has seen the same cost drops. But no, it, it hasn't seen the same cost drops. But it certainly has had cost drops. And you know the the design tools that you can use to make a paper are so much easier now to use. Sure. Uh, than in the past, right? So now you can just do it with some computer computer program whereas before they were literally like organizing things on a page and then having yeah. to do I don't know who knows what to make copies of that thing. Anyway, they're talking about the tr uh, the dramatic drops in revenue here in fact according to uh, let's see this is Ken Doctor, he's an industry analyst who writes at the News Newsonomics blog. He says that the industry has failed to increase revenue since 2008. In fact, it's dropped precipitously over the last Decade, He says they're still paying off debt, issuing dividends, keeping up with pension obligations, and anticipating print ad results that can't find a bottom. Even the New York Times, among the most aggressive in shifting to digital news, acknowledged recently that 70% of its revenues come from print. But newspaper organizations need to rethink their strategy to act more like startups, says Alan Mutter, a former Chicago newspaper editor who's now a consultant on digital news. He says, quote, people in the media business have to recognize they're not in the print or broadcasting business. They're in the business of attracting audiences to sell advertising, he said. And Mutter said many media organizations are under pressure to deliver quarterly earnings, which prevent a long term strategy. One exception is the Washington Post, which under new owner and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has been expanding in news gathering as it refines its digital strategy. This has paid off with a 65% jump in digital visitors in the year through April according to Comscore figures. Right. I mean, those dig digital visitors are valuable. And, you know, the question is, how are you going to turn them into more value? That's what it really comes down to. This is true with paper readers, too. Paper readers are valuable. The newspaper industry doesn't want to give up the notion that people need to pay for their dead trees. Mm. They just don't want to give up that notion. But that's 
how newspapers are surviving. The newspapers that are surviving tend to be these the penny saver, the the dollar weekly, the um, you know the, these weekly giveaways that often have uh, you know advertorial kind of uh, content or the good news in the community and and that sort of thing and those those things are fine um, for what they are but let's not forget that real news is valuable and that people want to read it and if you want those valuable readers to read your news then you need to give that thing away like so many everything that's what people want people want to consume it for free i understand you don't want to give it to them for free i understand reporters have uh, paychecks i get all that stuff you need a new business model that's the end of the story we can watch your newspaper sink into the ocean like mm. so many have while you complain about how your readers aren't paying for your newspapers anymore. <laughs> they're not doing it the way they always have done it. Right. <laughs> it's been a long time. We know that they're not going to do that. We know that this bo- business model is a failure. We need to try something new. Let's do with what let's do what works. Give away newspapers. Try to get them in people's mailboxes as best you can. And sell the advert, sell more advertising. Have a larger advertising to editorial uh, content and just get those advertisers to pay for it, and they want to be in front of people. You still have the currency of being the newspaper of record. Don't lose it. Don't kill your business model. Change. Well, I've already be- told you how, you stinking dinosaur. Yeah, I'm telling you, you right now. Well, you know, it'll be interesting to see you know, what people like Jeff Bezos are going to bring to the newspaper industry, the kind of innovation that the newspapers may just need. These old dinosaurs that have been in the the print business forever, they're not going to be the ones who are going to embrace the innovation, even if, you know, never even if it's shoved down their throat. It's going to be difficult for them. But somebody like Bezos coming in, he's got plenty of money. You know, dropping two hundred fifty or two hundred sixty five million dollars on a newspaper for him is probably you know no big deal. Uh, but having these innovators come in, I think maybe could give them something to where they could possibly survive, or at least a little bit longer. So it's going to be interesting to see what he brings to the table. Under Bezos, the Post has invested in reporting and design, and they've embedded technology and design people, and they've done a lot of things right, said one of the analysts. Although this probably hasn't translated into profits, Mutter does say that Bezos takes a long view and it's his own money. So he doesn't have this quarterly earnings thing that he has to deal with, right? Right. That's his money. I would concur with that. And what people need to look at is, is there's all kinds of profitable news sites and news sites on the Internet. That's all he's proposing to do is to create an already a news source and make it profitable in a digital sphere um, and probably at some point phase out his dead tree um, you know, project as uh, time goes by. I'm not recommending Maybe. that. I think that that des- dead tree distribution uh, system System has great value, but you know Bezos hasn't rang me up and asked me what I think about this either. Some newspapers have partnered with Facebook, which will host the content and deliver articles to users of the social network, potentially helping boost ad revenues. Mutter said that even though newspapers had resisted such deals, they swallowed their pride because they know the lack, or they know they lack, the sort of massive global reach that only Facebook can provide. This, however, will only offer modest relief to newspapers, according to Mutter. A study by the American Press Institute released last week said a key for the industry is changing the culture of newsrooms to foster innovation. This includes allowing interaction of different groups, journalists, technicians, and others, which the study referred to as tribes. To encourage innovation and transformation, organizations need to empower and motivate their tribes. API Deputy Director... Jeff Sonderman said cash-strapped newspapers can still invest and innovate by using a lean startup approach. Instead of spending a long time and a lot of money in a big attempt at something new, you spend a little bit of money on a small-scale experiment and you build in steps. Despite the downward spiral over the past decade, Sonderman said there are some positive signs. Quote, we see signs that publishers in the right environment with the right leadership are starting to stabilize and even grow in some areas. And that's about all they can say right now. (laughs) Like, there's there's a few publishers with the right people who've stabilized their blood loss, right? That's what he means by stabilize, to stop the hemorrhaging of cash that is currently affecting these guys. Now, again, the radio business is not in as bad of a way as the newspaper business, but they too are are t- having a tough time. You know, their well, revenues. AM are... had a lot of problems um, before Rush came along, and he kind of breathed some new life. Rush Limbaugh breathed, yep. breathed some new life into AM, but 
uh, honestly, there have been a lot of problems in the last two years since Rush Limbaugh called that lady a slut on the air. It was, mm-hmm. a, you know, I mean, they, they, what they say is, is when Rush Limbaugh catches a cold, um, talk radio catches pneumonia, and AM and talk radio are pretty strongly linked. Many AMs went uh, sports talk, which is another form of talk radio and not as controversial, but... I, I I don't know. Maybe maybe Russia's got to go for uh, revenues to come back to talk radio. Well, his uh, he can only last so much longger. His uh, contract. His, his, con- his, his early sixties. Yeah, his contract is uh, up this year. Oh, really? That'll be interesting. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to get that fifty mil a year again. All right, we're out of time for tonight, but we'll be joining you again tomorrow. So join us in the meantime online at freetalklive.com, where our archives are free. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, May 31st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.76 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,191 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $234. Antiwar.com reports the USA Freedom Act, an extremely watered-down reform bill, which some argue actually expands NSA surveillance capabilities, is coming up for a hugely important and likely very close vote on Sunday with the future of the USA Patriot Act Section 215, which the bill renews in the balance. Section 215 expires on Monday, and the USA Freedom Act requires 60 votes to pass procedural hurdles. Last weekend, the Senate managed only 57 votes in favor, but some officials say they can come up with the three additional votes to ensure its passage without debate on the amendments. Senator Rand Paul has vowed a filibuster in an effort to prevent the extension from going through on Sunday, saying he was determined to force the expiration of the NSA illegal spy program. Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn had previously expressed confidence that Paul would give in, saying he was a constructive guy. This weekend, he's condemning him, however, along with others who are surprised that his efforts to forestall extension were more than just a one-off grandstanding effort going into the recess. With the filibuster, Senator Paul can likely make things extremely difficult for the Republican leadership, but even if they do manage to force a vote on Sunday, there is no guarantee those three extra votes will be there. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley announced his 2016 presidential bid Saturday morning, mounting a campaign against presumptive favorite Democrat Hillary Clinton for the party's nomination. Announcing his bid in Baltimore, the city where he got his political start, O'Malley called on a new generation of leadership to rebuild the American dream. The former twice-elected Baltimore mayor focused on the American dream, racial tensions, and climate change, laying out his plans for his campaign. He said, we saved our country before and we will save Save our country now. We will do that by rebuilding the dream. Speaking at Federal Hill Park, O'Malley stressed income equality, the need to rebuild the country, and focused on the role Wall Street executives played in the 2008 financial crisis, saying, Tell me how it is in this country you can get pulled over if you have a broken taillight, but if you wreck the country, you are absolutely untouchable. O'Malley has seated himself firmly to the left of Clinton, opposing the Keystone XL pipeline and a pending Pacific Rim trade agreement and favoring expanding Social Security benefits. O'Malley is the third candidate to formally announce a bid for the 2016 Democratic nomination, joining Hillary Clinton and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Other considering a bid include Vice President Joe Biden, former Virginia Senator Jim Webb, and former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports rain caused flooding on roads in part of Texas on Saturday after severe weather killed at least 24 people during the week and prompted President Barack Obama to declare a disaster in the state. Texas has endured record rainfall in May. This week, flooding turned streets into rivers, ripped homes off foundations, swept over thousands of vehicles, and trapped people in cars and houses. Obama signed a disaster declaration late Friday to free up federal funds to help rebuild areas of Texas slammed by the storms. No estimate has been given for the total damage done in Texas. The Hayes County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that the bodies of two women were recovered on Saturday from the Blanco River. That raised the death toll from the flooding to at least 24. Flash flood warnings were in place in several counties in North Texas, including Dallas County. The National Weather Service forecasts scattered thunderstorms along a cold front stretching from Texas to the northeast United States. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The manatee is a solitary creature, drifting along in the warm, peaceful shallows. They are not usually held in a small glass enclosure with three other male manatees held bent on the violent, forced sex that I, for real, saw with my own eyes while alone one night at SeaWorld, San Diego. A distant relative of the elephant, the manatee has a prehensile upper lip which it uses to gather food. It also has a large penis. Classified as endangered, human boaters often cause serious wounds to manatee 